And welcome to Lancashire, England, and the city of Preston, standing on the River Ribble, the famous old place, and the famous Preston Guildhall. That's the venue, of course, for the BDO World Trophy, and we're on day five, the biggest day of them all. And this afternoon, it's quarterfinals day in the men's competition, semi-finals in the women's competition, with the uh, event closing in our programme later in the evening. But for this afternoon, uh, some splendid games. Ross Montgomery and Kyle McKinstry, Scotland versus Northern Ireland kicking us off. We have Peter Mage in the holder, still in it against the German Michael Unterbuckner. Uh, we have Jim Williams of Wales against Scott Baker from England and Labanowskis from Lithuania up against the man of the moment, Glenn Durrant, the world champion, who's been playing like a world champion during the course of this competition. And two cracking ladies matches, Ros Bulmer against Fallon Sherrick and Lorraine Wynne Stanley, the number one seed against the Russian Anastasia Dobromislova. Let's get things underway then and go to our host, Richard Ashdown. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the British Darts Organisation, welcome to finals day of the 2018 BDO World Trophy. We're at Preston Guildhall and we're about to get our men's quarterfinals underway. The first man we bring to the stage is from Northern Ireland, a former HAL Masters champion, the reigning Northern Ireland Open champion, the village man, Kyle McKinstry. We now introduce the man from Scotland, a BDO World Trophy finalist, the reigning British Open champion, the boss, Ross Montgomery. There we are, the first two players on this eventful day uh, on the hockey now and they are two quality players, one from Scotland, this guy Carl McKinstry from Northern Ireland, 31 years of age from Moygashel in County Tyrone and this man, the boss, Ross the boss, the number six seed from uh, East Kilbride and uh, they have been in terrific form to reach this stage with Wins for Montgomery over Daniel Day and Ryan Hogarth, his compatriot. And wins for McKinstry over John Worsley, the Welshman, and Scott Mitchell, the former world Thank champion. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And, uh, first leg, it's Kyle Getting us underway first. then. Game on. Let's hope we get a few more spectators later on. But anyway, those of you watching at home or wherever you're watching, do enjoy the fair. It's going to be really good fun. 60. Yeah, very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to 99. the BDO World Trophy. Stephen Jameson here joining John Gwynn on the commentary for you this afternoon. And as John quite rightly said, we should be in for a belter. And if you weren't sure already, that just sets the tone for what hopefully is going to be a cracking day of darts. These two have been really good for. 140. Montgomery has got through very very nicely 6-3 is Daniel Day 6-2 against Ryan Hogarth yesterday been in very very fine battle Carl McKinstry hit round one's highest average in his win against John Worsley in round one in round 
round two, he knocked off Scott Mitchell. 98. Carl, you require 161. This would be some way to get your first leg of the quarterfinals, mind. Not going to do it now. You expect to be back, though. 54. Barring something Russia special for the boss. Yes, his highest finish in the tournament is 100. Well, in that victory over Ryan Hogarth, 60. Eight oh, you require against Daniel Day in the first round. Carl McKinstry looking at 107. Can't finish now. Has had, 67. Uh, two, finish. Should should got a vital 126 against John Worsley and 142 against Scott Mitchell. So McKinstry will come back, having thrown first. Hope. 36. Hitting Can't a 16 dart leg. Thirty. Well, every Russia chance there, every chance to take an early lead. Now Montgomery looking at 68 to take that early lead. Gets the treble 20, looks at double four, looks at double two. Well, he only looked at them, he didn't hit them. Carl, you require yeah, 10. he did. Game double five is out for McKinstry. McKinstry. Always a difficult Second double that, Wilson especially when you've got first. three darts at it, but he did the right thing and attacked it from the off. And he takes the first leg. Ross Montgomery, though, is straight back into his rhythm. 123. First to seven. Now we're at the quarterfinal stage, so we've added on an extra couple of legs to the best of. Still a very quick format though. And very slightly, a little bit more wiggle room. 100. One hundred for Tom. Charlie Costafine, the young referee, one of the newest on the referee circuit. 83. Oh, Kent. 91. You heard the one about the Englishman, the Scotsman, the Irishman, didn't you? The referee uh, and the two players on the stage. <laughs> there you are. It's no joke this time, though. Wonderful, wonderful uh, tournament enjoyed by Montgomery. He, 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 his victory over Daniel Day in the first round was very special, but over Ryan Hogarth in the second round was extra special. 2.23 is average. And, uh, he said, well, one day you play good darts and the next day you can't guarantee you're going to do the same. 50. Carl, you require 72. Philosophical outlook uh, on matters. Now tops he wants. And that's the second time he's fallen short on that. Uh, let's see what Montgomery does with tops. Oh, that's a really sloppy one, unlike him. One dart then at tops. Game All he needs, thankfully. Got away with that a bit, Ross Montgomery. He only needed one dart. And he squares things up. But, uh, slightly uncharacteristically sloppy start from both players so far. Usually make uh, their darting careers off being clinical, this, this pet. 90. Yeah, disappointed with that one. Just slightly over pitched into treble seven. And, uh, still early in the day, of course. Although they will have been practicing for some time. 60. Yeah, Ross Montgomery actually said yesterday he's been first on every day of the competition so far. And, and of course, that, that will continue. Oh, Sorry, that will continue. Oh, he's at the top of the list, and uh, therefore, uh, that's the way that the organisers do it. Uh, not all competitions I've been involved in are, are, are done that 26. way. But at least we all know where we stand, don't we? Because Glenn alluded to it, he said, I'm always on last. And of course he will be. The last shall be first, and the first shall be last. And Ross Montgomery there with the game's second maximum. He should be first 
to the double, but Carl McKinstry is going with him. 40. Only a ton 40. Look like that was in from that camera angle. So he can't finish. So six starts at one, two, four. Could go for the ball, but he's probably going to set this up instead, which he does. 92. He's going to come back for double 16. Sensible stuff. 13 data beckons. He's had uh, some good darts, 120, 135, so an excellent Rocks visit from McKinstry, but to win a leg against the darts, 32 wanted, Game no problem. Third a 13 darter there for uh, Fourth leg. It's Ross Montgomery first. and the first on. break of throw of the day. <coughs> and uh, Chance, it's best of uh, 13 now, first to seven, slightly longer than the first two rounds. 100. Uh, but nevertheless, that first break of throw, all important. He needed it. Having lost the ball in the practice area. And knows that he's got to break throw somewhere along the line in order to win the game. Whereas the man who wins the throw knows that he doesn't. Unless, of course, he's broken himself. 42. Three, 34 darts from McKinstry there. Montgomery 60. doesn't punish him though. Stays pretty close. So much more like it. 140. there for one more and he does indeed get his second 140 of the leg. his throw and there's an opening here for McKinstry yes for a break back one, one nine left unlucky 120 59 left so favorite to take the leg and level up although he has missed opportunities already in this match 100. Now then. Carl, you require 59. 19 and tops. Just seen Montgomery nail this, no problem. He's having a little bit of a problem with it, yeah, or he was. But that first dart Carl at McKinstry. double top was a nice marker for him. And uh, immediately break Damn. back time. And now it's advantage McKinstry again. These two players do have a uh, contrasting history in this competition. We take a look at the averages. Expect those to rise as the match goes on. Both of them have been around about the 100 mark throughout both of their rounds so far. Montgomery up to the final in 2014. Runner up he was. Street making his debut in this competition and really come to light in the last couple of years. Yes, Montgomery lost to James Wilson um, in that two inaugural World Trophy, the World Trophies it is these days. 121. Tower. And uh, really expected, I think. I think he went into that game as favourite. Uh, moved on to the PDC is uh, a very useful player, Yorkshireman. 140. Can't you require 40? Double top then for McKinstry. Well, not impressive to be honest, that. Nor that. 35. And that's a weak Russia visit. An opportunity for Montgomery as a result. Big chance this. 20 for tops. He's already taken out 60. 32. Ooh, I think he just hit the flight there. Can you require five? Yes, he did catch the dart that was there in some way, and now an, an opportunity to rectify matters. He does so. Six leg. It's Ross to throw first. Game on. 
Holds his throw there, takes that 3-2 uh, lead. And uh, this is the last leg before we go for a break. 137. Montgomery will want to win it. it does factor into the psyche 80. of these players. It's almost a footballing equivalent of scoring a goal right before half time. Always the best time to score. So the cliche goes. It would be a fantastic time for McKinstry to break by a similar token. 70. Going to do it with scores like that though. This is up in this leg, and he's going to really hammer home that advantage here. 137. Second time in this leg, he's hit a 137, come down for the 19 successfully. And 146, a lot of players go for the 19s. Treble 19, treble 19, double 16. I think he's more of a traditionalist, treble 18, tre treble 20, treble 18, double 16. But it's academic anyway now. And 38, but it'll do him. 108, uh, rather 88 left, 58 scored I should say, not 38. So 88 for Montgomery to level up at 3 all. 41. Russia require 88. 48. Oh, it's a good job for Montgomery that Kyle is a long way back in this leg because he's made a little bit of a meal of this finish. Six darts down. From 146, and eventually he's got a dart for a double to tie his up. And then a cross for double ten. And if he's making a meal of it, just remember it is lunchtime, folks. And in the end, he gets it. So three apiece as the players go off for a break. And uh, a useful start, nothing absolutely spectacular. A nice 13 darter, the third leg of the. Uh, match uh, when Montgomery broke the throw for the first time but uh, overall average is 88 86 to 87 nothing special as I say and I think having got those first six legs underway I think uh, probably we'll see some improvement anyway we'll be back shortly to see for ourselves
back to Preston and the BDO World Trophy 2018. Ross Montgomery and Kyle McKinstry opening things up on Sunday afternoon here. And it has had the feeling of a Sunday stroll this match so far. It hasn't really got going as we know it can. These two have been two of the most impressive players in the tournament so far. And their averages in the 80s at the start of this match. Is perhaps not what we were expecting, but that's a little bit more like it from Carl McKinstry. Forty. Ross ranked number eight in the world. Carl McKinstry number fifteen. Ninety-five. Yes, for the purposes of this tournament, they're seeded six and fourteen, respectively. Of course. Uh, Ninety-six. Uh, positions in the uh, rankings, of course, change tournament by tournament. Dependent on results, not just theirs, but those of others, of course. Eighty-five. Eighty-five to take him down to two eighty. All the twos for McGinn Street, and that's why he went the eighteen. There have been a few of those today, and. It's nothing to do with the board. They're flicking. They're actually flicking. They're finding the dart that's already there, an impediment to the passage of the one they intend uh, to, to hit a target. It's more clumsiness than anything else. That's the best place to put the first dart. Eighty-five. Yes, and he's down the line darts and not being. Implemented as regularly as uh, so far in this tournament in beating John Worsley and Scott Mitchell. Well, I thought he was excellent. Double 16 here. 83. Russia require 140. 140 would be a big checkout. He's a third of the way there. Two thirds, double 10. Oh, unlucky. Car, you require 16. Good effort by Montgomery. Now then, fraction inside and 4 3 ahead, and no problem. And uh, Eight leg. it's Roster the throw last first. three legs have gone with throw, just legs 3 and 4 are where breaks occurred. It's thus, a very close encounter with McKinstry just. just Nosing it really, I suppose, because he has the advantage of throwing first, not in this leg, of course, but in the game generally, and that's his second maximum of the match, his eighth of the tournament. And it's been followed by a poor visit from Montgomery. McKinstry can really fully steal the darts here. Hasn't taken advantage as he might have done. One hundred. Forty two. And it's um, deadly silent. Certainly not a breath of air in the place. Just as well the referee's doing his job. One hundred. Russia require one hundred and sixty. So Montgomery just missed out on one hundred and forty. He's got a chance here of one hundred and sixty, or did have. Seventy-five. Carl, you require one hundred and twenty-one. 11 for Bull. Oh, and he knows. That's a dreadful mistake. And he's, he's, he's been wayward a number of times. They both have uh, thrown perhaps just too many darts. 
again here, looking for the treble now. Double 16, he's rectified it brilliantly. Uh, first dart was poor, second and third were excellent. Absolutely great. Yeah, really good for him, Ross Montgomery. Really good indeed. And the legs are just staying on the throw. It's not been easy for either of these two. They're really having to grind this one. It uh, has the potential to be a long day should you get the distance three games in a day of course these players are used to playing floor events where that'll be water off a duck's back but they'll know they can't expect to play well in every match they will have to have a match like this at some point well that may or may not be the case um if you're going to win a tour in Germany, you play pretty well throughout it. Uh, but this, the, the winner of this game will admit that he, it, it was scrappy. Certainly it is up to this point. There's nothing what I would call spectacular to recommend it. It started reasonably well. Two 180s in the first three legs. A 13 dart from Montgomery. But it's Six meandered three. along since rather than flown. I suppose, I think, as well, and John, these are two of the, of the real star players left in this tournament, if you want. 100! We've seen such high standards from them already. They, they'll be disappointed to ever really go below a 90 average, which they both are at the moment. 90 average in a couple of our other quarterfinals is probably enough to have a good win, but... It's just a dip. That would liven things up for Montgomery 170. 100! Russia require 170. We see the rapturous round of applause from those people sleeping in the audience. 100! Be a, the darting equivalent of a cockerel on this Sunday lunchtime. But uh, not to be. Went for two tops, didn't get it. So Montgomery 60. Requires 70. wants 70. Looks like treble 18, is it? No, treble 10. 20 for tops then. Has to move. 50. Doesn't get it. Can't Went inside. And a chance to recover. Paul McKinstry. Oh, this throw again, he does! And Ross Montgomery has Tenth had darts at double in both of the last two McKinstry legs. And Kyle is just holding on. 121. The closer to the winning line we get, the more it's likely that McKinstry will make it, simply because he has that advantage to throw. The onus is on this man, and it's darts like this that are going to have to help him at when McKinstry throws first. That certainly will help him possibly, maybe probably take this 10th leg. With a lead of 101 plus these. But it's against the darts that Montgomery has got to put in a particular effort. 85. Well, it's not, I mean, effort in the sense of big scores rather than yeah. straining himself. This is a good visit, great visit. 140. Plenty of room in there as well. Leaves himself 161. Montgomery should get this. May even have to use his six darts. But he'll expect to be back. 32. A weak visit from Montgomery. Tied on 83. 161 then. Won't do it. Goes out saying this needs to go for Ross. Yeah, go Ross trouble 17. If he hits the single 17, he'll look out for the 60. Oh, well, that is now once 80. Two double tops. Uh, that's an example of the kind of darts that he's thrown uh, fairly, fairly regularly in this match. McKinstry has been guilty of a few as well. But now McGinstry can, actu can actually steal this. Topsy wants, and if he gets this, Game then that to me is the nail in the coffin that almost 
puts Montgomery out of this competition. Montgomery made a mess of what was a winning situation and uh, McKinstry stepped in with a 106 finish. It was as though he could smell the opportunity and he took it quite brilliantly. Killer instinct, wasn't it, from McKinstry? Great darts from the Northern Irishman. And Ross Montgomery now is on the ropes. That's right, the village man is in front now by six legs. 140! He saw the opportunity and then he went. Brilliant. That's seizing the moment. It hasn't been a brilliant game, but that was a brilliant moment. 83. Montgomery still in semi slumber, one feels. 95 because he needs two breaks of throw as well as having to hold his own throw well, basically what I'm saying is he's got to win all three legs that'll help him that will help him another 180 for Montgomery puts him in front in this leg and that's a poor visit from McKinstry should get six darts this Montgomery might not even need him. No, he wanted the treble 19 for double 18 there. But he's in a very, very good place. But this is for the match. And I once remember a man winning a tournament, not a match with a 170 finish, a certain Colin Lloyd. Uh, but this is not McKinstry's uh, moment. It will possibly come soon, but incumbent on Montgomery to keep his hopes alive by taking out double top here. Double ten, absolutely vital. Yes, he's done it on this occasion. That's his first break of throw since the third leg of the match. And although it in itself doesn't assure him uh, a chance of victory, if he holds his throw here, then it's all nip and tuck on the very last leg. What a great start by Montgomery, who suddenly is found about 180s in his last three legs. Oh, you mentioned the killer instinct of McKinstry when he had the crucial 42. chance to break. And this is the survival instinct of Ross Montgomery kicking in now. Big scores are coming in from the boss man. Five perfect darts. Make it six. Oh, brilliant stuff from Montgomery. From nowhere, he's awoken from his slumber. And he is now on a nine-dart finish. One for one wanted. And what a moment this could be. It'd be the first ever in the World Darts Trophy. It would have been <laughs> the first ever in the World Darts Trophy, but that's a terrific visit, 130. He really wanted the 25 there to leave himself 36, but he's on an 11 dart finish. And then whenever he finishes, whether it be an 11 or 14 or whatever, will take us into the deciding leg. Brilliant darts from Montgomery. He's brought it when he needed to. Game and that is a superb leg of darts. 11 darts, at 6 perfect darts. We go first. to the decider. And Carl McKinstry has the throw. Ross Montgomery has done all he can to keep himself in it after it looked like he might well have been dead and buried. Yeah, when he went 6-4 down, that 10th leg, he hit his second 180 of the match, held sway, missed his opportunity, McKinstry nipped in with a brilliant 106 finish, and since then, it's been 96. Montgomery, Montgomery, Montgomery. Sounds like El Alamein, I know, but... Brilliant 11 dart leg. 57 and 257s to open up the final leg from McKinstry. Ross has a chance here. Another one of these, and the leg is his for the taking. As it is, it remains a touch open. He does have the lead, but it's a slim one. 63 ahead, Montgomery. McKinstry. 97. That's the dart he needed. 34 ahead, McKinstry. It's that close, folks. 6-6. Six, six. 100. 2-2-4 two, two, plays 2 9 0. Who's going to make it 
into the semi. Cool customer, this fella. Another good treble 19 at the end of that little sequence. Getting that treble like that one. Could be worth twice its value in a sense as he goes down to 1, 2, 4, 70 in it. He will. Needed that treble. I think that again makes the difference now. Montgomery holding in on the double. Poor dart though, even among some good ones. 100 left. 44. Will he come back? Carl, you will he come back? Travel 20 is the requisite. Doesn't get it. Won't finish. Montgomery will need 80. 58. 80 for the match. For a famous victory. He'll have won the last three legs. Having been 6-4 down. Now he wants double top, the biggest double top of this tournament for 40. him. Over the top and McKinstry will Can't come for the match now. It's been that close, folks. McKinstry will go for treble 18. Doesn't get it, so 20. And now his turn for tops. That's a great marker. Over the top 39. of that and it's in. But no, nerves take their toll. 40. And Montgomery tops for the match Game and tops it is the, the Scott goes Russell through Montgomery. an amazing finish to that game really when McKinstry made it 6-4 and was throwing first twice out of three legs I thought he had done enough to win but M Montgomery dug deep and how deep he did dig an 11 data in the 12th leg starting with two maximums he was actually on the nine data put him level and then in the end in a nervous finish he managed to see it through it was a an exciting game Steve without being a wonderful game yeah and I think the numbers back that up Carl McKinstry not near his devastating best neither in truth was Ross Montgomery but he shaded it overall the two 180s towards the end of the match will have bumped that average up a good chunk and where Ross really let himself down was in between the the main scoring and then getting to the double far too many very low scores chasing trebles around the board but he got through and that's the main thing he advances to the semi-final of the BDO darts world trophy we'll hear from the boss after the break
Yes, here in Preston, it's a big afternoon and an even bigger evening uh, coming up uh, because uh, obviously it's quarterfinals for the men, half finals, semi finals for the women this afternoon. And that first game, 7 6 to Montgomery, was 6 4 down. The Northern Ireland man let him in and uh, he took it very, very well indeed. An 11 darter amongst those last three legs, by the way, and an attempt at the 9 darter. Anyway. He's going to be talking now, Ross Montgomery, to my colleague Steve Jameson. Over to you, Steve. Yeah, thank you very much, John. Ross, big congratulations on getting over the line there. That was a tough match for you. Yeah, very tough. Uh, Kyle's just been a uh, Northern Ireland captain and he's always a hard, hard player to play against. And I think both of us were giving each other too much respect because we practice together, we've travelled together, we meet each other's kids and it's a very difficult match to play against. But Thankfully, I fell over the line. Was it a bit of a strange one? I know you've enjoyed playing early so far uh, in this competition, played first on both of your matches. It did have the feel of a, a, a bit of a quieter experience in the in the hall this morning. Do you think that played a part in any way towards the start especially? It may have done, yeah. It's, uh, it was a strange one out there today. It was a wee bit noisier yesterday and, and probably the same amount of people, but I think it's just a lazy Sunday attitude, I think. <laughs> And so we threw the last three legs as well because you must you must have been a little bit worried when when Carl took it out to go six four up that you might not get another chance at this one and breaking two of the last three legs to win it was some comeback. Yeah, it was uh, one of probably my best comebacks, one of my best. But when he went six four up, I thought I was I thought I was out. It maybe helped me relax a little bit, and then unfortunately with the the, the, the nine dart I was missed. But uh, I'm quite happy to get through it. I'm I must thank Kyle for his sportsmanship after the match. And in terms of the, the rest of the day, are you going to take a look at the other the quarter final or are you just going to relax and, and do your own thing? Yeah, I'll probably just relax and do my own thing, mate. Go out for a little walk. I don't know. I'll see what Dorothy wants to do and then we'll decide from there. Sounds like a plan. We look forward to seeing you later on. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Thank you. Cheers, guys. So there we are. The uh, winner of that first game, he'll be in the semi-final uh, this evening and he will be hoping the final too. Well, now we come to the semi-finals of the women's competition and yesterday Fallon Sherrock came back remarkably to stay alive in this competition and she'll be playing Ros Bulmer, the uh, lady from East Anglia who didn't expect to reach this stage. She has done so deservedly. So let's go over now and have them introduced. Fallon Sherrick then against Ros Bulmer, two English players, and Richard Ashdown to introduce. Ladies them. and gentlemen, this is the 2018 BDO World Trophy, and it's time to get our women's semi finals underway. Played over the best of nine legs, we now introduce to the stage a BDO World Trophy qualifier. A Denmark Masters semi finalist, now a BDO World Trophy semi finalist, Ros. Bulma! We now introduce the current holder of six BDO World Ranking titles, a Winmore World Masters and Lakeside World Championship finalist, Fallon Sherrard! Here we go then, first women's semi-final. Fallon Sherrick taking on Roz Bulmer. Roz has been on a real roll in this competition. A wonderful 4-3 win over 
one of the top seeds, Dita Hedman, in round one. And she really took apart Sharon Prince, who was the sixth seed in this competition in the quarterfinal. Won that 4-0. She said in her interview yesterday she's going to have to go down to the shops because she doesn't have enough knickers and socks to last her through to today. That's how little she was expecting to be here. And she's really, really enjoying it. Really brilliant personality to have on the on the final day today. And uh, Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. First been a pleasure line, interviewing her. So first. She's delighted Demo. to be here, but she'll know she's in for a real test here, John, against a Fallon Sherrick who performed a bit of a miraculous comeback in her quarterfinal. 22. But who is a recent double winner in Belgium just last weekend and seems to be growing into this competition. Yes, yeah, she's a terrific player. And, um, from the early days, a former youth champion. She's been around a while, even though she's now only still 23 years of age. Uh, the number 59. seven seed and... Uh, she disposed of Rian Griffiths 4-2 and then found herself 3-0 down against Maria O'Brien uh, who actually had 43. a dart to win the match uh, double 16, didn't get it obviously and from then on it was all Sherrick 60 and uh, with real quality darts 2 180s, a 90 finish on the bull uh, really did 83. Her superiority in those four legs. But I've been very impressed with uh, Ros Bulmer. Beat Dieter Hedman 4 3. And again, could have gone either way. She had a 117 finish in that in the opening leg. And of course, in the second leg of her win over Sharon Prince, she had a 118. So, second leg, expect a 119 finish from Bulmer. That's the trick anyway. <laughs> Wouldn't that be some lovely <laughs> symmetry? She's in at the treble again here. 140 in her last visit. Can she go one better, maybe? One on an M40. Quite, but sets herself up beautifully on 80. Fallon, who started with a ton compared to Ros's 22. It's almost gone the other way in this leg, but Fallon is coming back. That's some brilliant darts. First maximum of the match. Ross, and it means 80. this 80 may well have to go. Tops she wants for one zip. 40. Just over Fanny the wire now. Fallon Sherrick, courtesy of that 180. as a tidy two data. 18, double 18. Yeah, that's Kim Sean. Well, 18, double line. 18 for an 18 data. I'd Second say that was an 18 leg, first. wouldn't you? <laughs> anyway, it's a winning leg for Fallon Sherrick. Wonderful 180, which, by the way, is 10 18s. And... Uh, Yeah, we talk about symmetry. There's some lovely 18 symmetry there. And for Fallon, that could be a really important 16. leg to win because she has struggled at the start of her matches to really get going. And if she can win the first leg, might just settle her down quicker and get her into her scoring because this is what she's all about. Second on 180. On Brilliant dance. And this is the quality of the young lady hit two 180s in 64. her last match in that remarkable comeback and by my she's finding our treble 20 with uh, 70 with ease great regularity nailing it left herself 170 whether intentionally or not I do not know but it's Thank there anyway, and if there's with a lady in world that's capable of taking this out, it's Fallon Sherrick. I'm a touch surprised that One of them <laughs> a, a triple 20 didn't go in, but it was some recovery. Left to 36. That's great thinking as well as great play. Great play. Great thinking. 13 16. data beckons. She wants Fanny that double 18 36. again, the one that she hit just seconds ago and yeah, again what an excellent leg a 13 show. dart leg for Fallon Jarek my my Ros Bulmer done really well to get to this stage 
She's got a little bit longer to recover here than that we has been the case. One hundred. Uh, all seven legs were played in her first round win against Dita Hedman. Uh, she'll be hoping to have at least seven legs in this one because at the moment it's all Sherrick. Yeah, it is, and there's not an awful lot that Roz can do about the first couple of legs. She played really well in the first. 41. Was on a pretty decent total after 13 darts, but the player goes out in 13 darts. I don't care what match you're at in this competition, you're going to struggle to top that. 59. Yep. has really, really started well this match, but a slow start in this leg might just give Roz the opening she needs. Treble would be handy. So 2-0. First to five now, as I say. If it went nine legs, then Bulmer would be delighted. Even if 16. it went seven, she'd be happy because she'd have to have had a couple of legs on the board. And with darts like this. Oh, with darts like that! It could happen. 120 left. Quality darts from both the players well, here, and that's Sherrick, absolutely wonderful. Down to 190 with that. 134. Now she'll go all into the one, as it turns out. But that's a, a dart she, couldn't, she can ill afford, because if Sherrick gets a score here, she can threaten this leg. A ton would be very nice indeed. 90 left, you see. requires 79. 18 leaves tops. Only her second daughter a double in the match. Needs it. Doesn't Doesn't get it. Fallon, you require and we can only assume Fallon will take this out. Double 15 for three zip. Yeah, Brilliant. That's and that's the level. Fallon that's Sherrick. what Roz Four has to be. Superb from Fallon Sherrick that. Yeah, it was the previous visit as well, the ton. Remember, she wanted 190. She hit single 20, single 20, and got the treble 20 with the last dart to leave 90. Effectively, she, she got 150 in three darts. Treble 20, the last visit, the last dart of the previous visit, and then treble 20, double 15, just like that. That's the quality of the player, 16. quality of the individual. And um, admirable. Here we go again. Here we go again. One of an Not end 20. quite what she intended, or indeed what I thought, but 120 in two is pretty good going. Yeah, it was a rank last start, that from Fallon Sherrick, not threatening the treble, but 120 is still a kind score to her. She'll be delighted with the start she's made. After three legs yesterday, it's Maria O'Brien. She was 3-0 down, and I can't repeat what she told me, sh what she thought of the darts <laughs> that she threw in the first three legs yesterday. She'll be far more pleased with Sunday's offering. Escaping that dart for double 16 99. would have given uh, O'Brien victory spurred Sherrick on and I think shook her to the bones and made her realise that uh, she had to get going and she certainly Fighting did and uh, she started brilliantly here today, 127 now treble 19, she wouldn't have gone for the bull because bull is on a non-finish a bogey, a bull a bogey One hundred. Good turn now. Sixty-six left. Eighty for Sherrick. Well, if you can get nineteen two, you can get eighteen two. Not now, you can't. Went the bull route and wasn't too successful in doing so. Now, Ros has an opportunity. A good last start from Fallon to tee herself up. Requires sixty-six. Sixty-six means treble ten first. Gets it. Double eighteen. Two darts at it. Decent marker. 48. Oh, just inside. 
So their favourite double this. Uh, double 16 is not too bad. Double eight is pretty good. I'm doing my best for you, Fallon. I'm doing my best for you. <laughs> and that's Kim Shaw on the from me Finish or anybody else right now. 4 0. Very impressive. And now Ros has really got to hold on here somehow. You can see the difference in the quality 16. in those figures. No question about it. Well, 88.41. We Sorry, mate. We saw the first uh, the first match of the day, two of the best men's players in the BDO, Ross Montgomery and Karl McKinstry. They would have struggled to live with the figures that Fallon Sherrick is putting up in this one. 88.9 100. is perfectly good enough to really give anyone a game. Yes. She's one on rarely been 14. under pressure, of course, but... Uh, She's playing the board, and that's the beauty of it. Playing beautiful, beautiful darts. 100. And I'm pleased for Ros as well, because Ros has played well. It's not like she's folded or crumbled in any way. A couple of turns in this leg to keep her in touch. Fallon has hit a turn and a turn 81. 40. Yeah, Ros has played, I think, well, but not well enough in fairness with the average she's got deserving of a semi-final place I think we have 85. to be we have to be accurate and honest about that um, she's done well to get to this stage she's found someone now who is on fire this is absolutely brilliant this is as good a, a performance I've seen from Fallon for a long long time and uh, very very impressive she's going to be averaging round about 90 45. and uh, double, wants double top for a 5-0 victory and she has swept her opponent aside in brilliant fashion. There we are, a brilliant, Shots brilliant victory for Fallon Sherrick. And uh, a 5-0 success. Ros Bulmer, I think she's a smashing lady. She's a great sport and she's a darn good dart player. But there are darn good dart players and there are very, very exceptional dart players. And believe you me, that's the difference here between the two. Fallon Sherrick with a 91.65 average and 15 points ahead of Ros Bulmer. Yes, that's not bad, 76.85, but it's not good enough to get you into a big semi-final. It isn't. Superb performance from Fallon Sherrick. She rocks! We'll talk to her after the break.
Yes, welcome back to Preston. We've just seen a scintillating performance from Fallon Sherrick after that very close victory for Ross Montgomery. Sherrick reeling off five legs on the trot. That's five legs on the trot. That's nine on the trot she's won since she was 3-0 down in the first round. And all of them brilliant legs. She's now uh, in the interview area. So over to you, Mr. Steve Jameson with Fallon. Yeah, thank you very much, John. Fallon, congratulations on a brilliant performance. John said on commentary, that's the best he's seen you play that he can remember. Is that something that you'd agree with as well? Um, yeah, on telly, it's, I mean, I can do it, like, I can hit 30 averages in practice, but I've never actually done it on stage. Is that particularly pleasing for you? Because I know you had to work so hard to get here and been 3-0 down in the quarter-final. It's almost if you just carried on from there. One eighties all over the place, 13 dart legs. You must fill you with so much confidence heading into the final now. I'm just happy with how I played. and I've, I mean, after that performance, I do have a lot of confidence, but I'll just see how it goes in the final. Well, congratulations on making it. We can't wait to watch you later. It should be a great game either way. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Later, she'll be meeting uh, the uh, winner of Lorraine Wynne Stanley and Anastasia Dobromislova, so that's going to be interesting, isn't it? Uh, they're going to be on a little later. But first of all, we've got this game on. A man who knocked out yesterday in an incredible match. Uh, one of the favourites uh, for this tournament, of course, Mark McGinney. And uh, he's up against Peter Machin, who was the runner-up in this event two years ago, went one better and won it last year. So we're in for a cracker here. It's Germany against Australia. Uh, Unterbuchner against Machin. And uh, Richard, I know you're looking forward to this one as much as me. Over to you, Richard. Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with our men's quarterfinals of the 2018 BDO World Trophy. Let's welcome to the stage the reigning Australian Grandmasters champion and part of Australia's World Cup winning team. He's the reigning BDO World Trophy champion. It's Meichi, Peter Meichi! We now introduce from Germany a Lakeside World Championship semi finalist, a German Masters finalist, Mikhail Unterbuchner. Well, some game in prospect here, and uh, gotta say, Fallon Sherrick is still absolutely breathtaking performance as far as I'm concerned, and she's capable of better than that. First time she's done over 90 on the telly, she says. There's gonna be more, and these fellas do it regularly. Our reigning champion, of course, up against uh, the German who's so impressed this week and was in an absolute humdinger against Mark McGinney yesterday. It could have gone either way it was literally down to the wire and uh, the wire of the board of course and uh, so all I can say is sit back and enjoy this one because I honestly believe on the evidence of what I've seen over the last few days uh, Steve that uh, this is the man who's the more likely winner I think that uh, Machin has had to scrap his way Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, first leg, Peter to roll first. Game on. I have to agree. I really would. Machin is the reigning champion 
in this event. It's the final of the year before that. He loves playing in the World Trophy. Always seems to bring the best out of him. But, as John rightly said, he has scrapped 6-3 against James Hurrell. He's only just come back from a bit of an illness and was nowhere near his best. 6-5 versus Wes Harms and he really clawed over the line there. There's Mikael Unterbuchner has been pretty good indeed. 6-1 against Dean Reynolds, who was the seed in that match. And then 6-5 against the world number one, Mark McGinney. That was the performance that really made him stand out and maybe made a few around these parts. Really sit up and take notice of the Lakeside semi-finalist and German Masters finalist this year. Not one to be taken lightly. Oh, no, no. Um, the impressive thing about that game with Mark McGinney was 84. there were times when you thought he was going to be outclassed. McGinney was so, so good. Uh, but he raised his game. 132. I think if we and look back at that one as well, what was most impressive is Mikhail started the better. And then McGinney, after the break, came out like we know McGinney can. And Mikhail didn't buckle. Kept That's right. He hit him hard. He really hit 100. him hard. And uh, that was the test of his steel. That was a test of his ability. Not only to play darts, but to cope with the pressure, the situation that uh, 90. Magini presented to him. And he came through it just. So Machin, struggling here on 200. And after 12 darts, the man from Munich wants double top for 36. an early break of throw. Game shot in the first Perfect line. start that. Really good Second start from Mikhail. One dart the double, all he needed. He has been pretty good on the doubles so far in this tournament. He's just been so steady. Yet to see any sort of dip in performance. He hasn't maybe shown the exceptional averages, but he hasn't dipped. And that is a point. I think that's a key point. He's maintained a level. He actually 42. increased the level of his performance. He had to against McGinney, which is what I was trying to say a few minutes ago. And I do believe that he has more in the locker. You can't say that 42. about every player, but you do feel that this fella, Unterbuchner, he's one of the best German players I've seen on the evidence of the two games he's played. And uh, he's just, it's a 13 data to stop with to start with perfect start as you say actually a perfect that would be a nine data but i know what you mean <laughs> one that makes him very contented 99 uh, michael is keeping our spotters on their toes with the way he plays does dance around the trebles quite a bit Mike's going for 18, Mike's going for 19. Our spotter dances around the treble, does he? Or do you mean the player? <laughs> it depends on the day and the night before. 60. You're not suggesting that our lovely Scottish spotter was out drinking last night, are you? I would do nothing of the sort. Because suggesting it would be false. Anyway. Well, let's just say he had a spotter whiskey. 134. Mikhail, you require 160. 160 then for Mikhail. He's not going to go this time, but he can set this up really nicely. 100. Yeah, almost uh, got a 140. I think he'd prefer to have a go at tops. Uh, this is a good visit. Treble 19 for tops. And we haven't said too much about Majin so far. He had a, a not too wonderful first leg, but he's certainly making inroads there. And now that 60 has got to go. Otherwise, it's break back time. And, you know, that's, him, that's the thing. He just, he just does it, doesn't he? On to book first. He is definitely a player who has more in the locker, who is going to go places been around a little while he's 30 years of age and I think the evidence were well, in reaching the semi-final of course he lost to McGinney in the semi-final of the world championship didn't he 
You know, he beat David Cameron, he beat Jamie Hughes, Martin Phillips and Richard Veenstra in getting to the semi-final. And he only lost 6-4 in sets to uh, McGinney there. Uh, and I think if he hadn't announced himself before on the big stage, he did then, and he's certainly capable One of winning this tournament. Yeah, and he's backed it up as well. That's the, that's the key thing. He got to the final of the German Masters, where he's beaten by Scott Baker, who we'll see later on. One hundred and forty. First 180 down. I'm not sure what the German for steady Eddie is, but that's the sort of player that he is. Well, I think he's more than that, Steve. I honestly think he's more than that. He's steady Eddie plus. Because he, he, he can actually bring out the big shots when he needs them. And, and he had to in his victory over McGinney yesterday. Machen here when he comes 91. back is looking at a 12 data potentially. It would be a champagne out. He's been better in this leg, Machen. 140 and two tons. Treble 17 would leave the ball. And he'd have had a go at it because Hunter Buckner's on a finish. Uh, yeah, it's the biggest of the lot. We have had one during the course of the few, last few days. And the chance here for Machin with throw to do a 13 darter of his own. In. An inch, no and that's only three quarters of an inch. Need a new Meyer rule, mate. Well, Unterbrook has yet to miss a dart at a double. He's still Unterbrook. yet to miss a dart at a double. It's a 13 darter Four for leg. the Meyer German. And goodness me, he has started this match like a train. Look at the scores. Yet to hit a 180, but he's also yet to miss a double. Yeah, that's the important stat. Uh, of course it is. And, and one or two occasions he's had a bit of leeway. He won one leg when Majin was way back, even on his own throw. Um, he's scored well. He's finished well. Everything he's done so far is uh, very impressive. 60. Three out of three. It may not be enough for Machin uh, in this leg, possibly, but generally through the game, I think he's going to have to find two trebles quite regularly in order to stay with the German. I think that's why last leg would have hurt Peter Machin because it was the best leg he's thrown by some way. It was consistent, scored well, just missed three darts at a double. He too could have had a 13 dart at. And had he done so, then Hunter Buckner would not have done so. Exactly that. The benefit of throwing first, of course. 100. Hunter Buckner has that in this leg. He's slightly behind. And a good score here from Machen would set him up really nicely. Once another. Gets it. 70 left. 70 left. And uh, a 14 data possibly. One of those legs where Hunter Buckner hasn't held sway for a, for a change. So, a real chance, as indeed he had in the last leg, but spurned it then. Well, that's terrible. That is unforgivable. Right in the middle of treble 20 when he was going for high 20, big 20. It's, he's going to come back and have another go at this. Uh, but look at that, brilliant start, absolutely fantastic to leave 32. And now he's got to get this 70. That's 58 left. He wants 18 for tops. Tops. He's only going to get one dart at tops. And that is the punishment he gets for hitting treble 20 before. And onto Buckner absolutely stole that leg. 4-0 now to the German and his least impressive leg but there was something impressive about the way he finished it he got the one two eight to land himself on 32 put that mate in 70 under a good deal of pressure and uh, the australian wasn't equal to it but the previous visit where he lost that leg 
very in my view totally agree with it as well 140 good start from Machen needs plenty more where that came from Unterbuckner just held his own throw in that leg but that felt pivotal is he going to smash in the game's first 180 no but he'll be satisfied with a 140 well you know despite the fact that he is a very very good player he doesn't hit 180s uh, for fun 130 Dean Reynolds he beat 6-1 and he's uh, he did hit a 180 it's not a criticism he must have hit a lot of other good scores and in that 11 legger with Mark McGinney fantastic match high scoring for both players uh, Unter Buckner hit three 180s he had a 1-2-1 and a 1-3-3 finish in that 140 to leave 87 Second leg running, Machin well ahead of his opponent. Messed it up last time. 58. Don't think he will this time. Well, he's on 11 data at the moment. Double 18. That's a he great response from Machin. Machin. 140, 134, 140, 87 out. 11 darts. And that, hopefully for him and for his many supporters, who usually are clad in green and gold. 140! They will hope that that's the catalyst for a Machin fight back. They used to say, even in days of yore in the 70s and 80s, 93. That Cliff Lazarenko was not the most prolific 180 scorers, but nobody ploughed in 140s quite like him. And. Uh, it might turn out to be that uh, Herr Unterbuckner is similar. One Can't go on the evidence of one match or even one tournament. One hundred. And your history of darts? How good is it, Steve? Who was known as the Tom Machine in the late 70s and through the 80s? One of the best left-handers ever seen in the game. Old man now, and I saw him the other week. Lovely fella called Alan Glazier. Remember the name, the Tom Machine? I do remember the name, Alan Glazier. I think he stopped playing. Still playing, Alan, in Rochdale? Saw him at their presentation night back in April. One He's still smashing hundred. in the tons. Mikhail Not quite. <laughs> He's the ten machine. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Double eight. Yes, he had to look to see if it was in. Now, first dart he's missed at a double in this entire match. Can he be made to pay? No, is the answer. 134. Brilliant visit though, brilliant visit. This for a 5-1 lead going into the break. An excellent, excellent exhibition of darts from the German. And his finishing has been absolutely spectacular. He's hardly missed a double. In fact, I'm not sure he has. We'll check that. Just the one. Yes, he had two darts, didn't he, at a double uh, earlier uh, there it is anyway five out of six 83 percent wonderful start but the average as well a 96.52 it was higher than that early he was in the hundreds uh, but uh, we've seen a wonderful 11 data from peter menchip machin that's why his average is up at 93.6 this is a very high quality game and i'm sure we're going to see more of that sort of quality when we come back after the break
So there we are, Anthony Dundas, the formidable Scott referee, waiting on the ball, on the stage there for the players to arrive. Five one to Mikael Unterbuchner from Munich against Peter Machin from Adelaide. And the reigning champ with it all to do. And I've got to be honest, uh, even if Peter Machin raises his game in order to try and pull back that deficit, leg, I just have a feeling that uh, game on. Unterbuck, to, uh, Unterbuck no, can, will do the same and, and keep, uh, uh, keep him at arm's length. But when you're a winner of an event like this, 60. you've obviously got the quality. I've seen it in the past. But when you're playing as well as this man is at the moment, and there's further evidence of the 140 machine coming into play, then it's going to be tough for the boy in blue. 97. Machin with the darts in this leg and needs to make those count. Needs to start holding throat. Start somewhere. One hundred. It's a mountain to climb. But small steps can be taken to start it. And then we've seen already yeah. in this tournament it can start something of a cascade. And we've seen Mikhail and Tabukna pressured from behind by Mark McGinney. But the further in this tournament he gets, the bigger the stakes, the more to lose. Well, Hunter Buckner almost had a bye in the first round. Um, I spoke to Dean Reynolds afterwards on his way out and uh, he was down in the dumps, frankly. Uh, I can well understand such a promising youngster years ago. Uh, the world was his oyster. But he is genuinely struggling at the moment, and uh, he, uh, there was evidence of that in that match, uh, which Hunter Buckner won 6 1. And 78. so he really had to pull out all the best as he wants double 16 here. He does so, gets a 14 data, actually wins that against the throw, and uh, proves really that he is. For my money, the man on current 60. form most likely to beat Glenn Durant if anybody is to. It's a big statement, but uh, it's a big statement. But it's it's it. The man most likely I, I is not the same as saying he will do. And I'm not um, saying I disagree with no, that either. No, no. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm saying that with respect, all due respect to the other men in the competition. Of course, I am. They're, they're all good players, uh, and they all have a game, a, a top game. And they'd all be first to admit that Durren is the man to beat yes. in this competition. I don't think anybody can deny that. And the way that Hunter Buckner One has hundred. faced up to the challenges is nothing more than quite 135. brilliant another 135 140s doesn't get a prolific number of 180s i'm sure there are going to be days and nights when he will 99 210 after nine he wants something to finish that's just what he can do you always get the sense that when he needs a treble, and he's reaching for one, he has a, an uncanny knack of finding it. He's left himself pretty handy on 116. 38. And again, it's just a case of hitting one treble, and it could be all she wrote. 60. So to leave 56 uh, for the match, it's been a, a coast of a ride, a coast.
coasting to victory, really. For Anton Buckner. And I'll be very surprised if he doesn't finish it this leg. Double top he wants for a 7 1 victory. That is quite brilliant. An absolutely amazing victory that for the German. Peter Machin is now out of the competition. The reigning champion was never really quite in that match. His one leg was a quite brilliant 11 data, the fifth leg of the match. But that was really only the, the only time we saw the very best of Peter Machin and I'm looking forward to seeing these stats forget the stats in the right hand column they are the stats of a beaten man who knows he's been completely outplayed look at the stats on the left 7 out of 8 on the doubles 88% 96.64 approaching the sort of form that he's going to need for his uh, semi-final and the, if he gets through his final encounter that is quite brilliant. And it stuff. sets up a mouth-watering semi-final as well against Ross the Boss Montgomery. We've got plenty more for you when we come back on Free Sports. Do join us for the second women's semi-final. That's coming up next. Lorraine Wynn Stanley takes on Anastasia Dobromislova next.
Yes, Preston Guildhall has just seen a wonderful performance from uh, the German Michael Unterbuckner, or Mikael, I should say, Unterbuckner. And uh, sadly, Peter Machin, who's done well to get to two consecutive finals of this competition, winning, of course, 12 months ago, is now out of the tournament. But he is with Steve, as is Mikael Unterbuckner, they're together. It'll be great to hear from Peter. I'm sure he's got some great words to say about his opponent. He's with Steve. Thank you now. very much, John. Joined now by both Peter and Mikhail. Gents, congratulations on a great game, first of all. Peter, we'll start with you. The first time you've not made it through to the final in a couple of years, but I get the sense that you felt like you couldn't really do a lot against this man today. Oh, look, he was awesome all the way through. Like, you got down to a finish and... You know, I didn't look up at all, and he just went, it was game shot. It's like, yep, yeah, okay, well done, no drums. Head on, next leg, game shot, well done, okay, next leg, and all of a sudden I ran out of legs. But it was, he, he scored well, he finished well, it was, it's what you want to play. Like, for me, that's the stuff I thrive on. I, want, I, I could start there all day and do that and get my buck until I actually get in front of him. And, but that's what it's all about. And, you know, fair play, he played absolutely beautiful. So I really wish him all the best, and I personally hope he takes it out. Mikhail, it was a fantastic performance from you. Do you think you're getting better with every round in this competition? Yes, with every round I can play better and it's the experience on the stage and I hope the next game was also good. And Well, we certainly hope that. Peter, just a quick word from you before we go. We've enjoyed your company for World Trophies for the last two years. I know you love playing in this competition. Will we see you back next year as well? That depends. Um, it's really hard for Australia. Like we've got one qualifier that comes through, and it's normally our number one ranked player, and that's Tomo at the moment. And you know, he played Andy, and it was unfortunate. But um, I don't. I only play half the tournaments what he does. So for next year, I'm probably have to going to say no on on what's happening at the moment. So, um, but that's life. You get back on the horse and go back through. So. You know, I've been very grateful for what I've got out of the game. You know, from the last three World Trophies, I picked up some really good sponsorship and you know, got my own darts now and everything's going ahead. I've just run out of bloody holidays. And that's the worst part. Like, you know, it's so hard in Australia. I've worked for the company that I worked for for the last 22 years. Um, but I actually had to buy holidays last year to, to come away for the Grand Slam. And then to come away from you, I just had, I think it was eight hours over to come away. So, yeah. I'm going to build them up and you know, hopefully I can get through and play a few more tournaments and you never know your luck. Well, we'd love to welcome you here again, I know that. And Mikhail, final word for yourself, a tremendous performance in the quarter-final. How excited are you to play Ross in the semi-final? You're both playing really well, it should be a good game. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll leave it at that. Guys, congratulations on a terrific match and we wish both of you the very best. Mikhail, good luck later. Thank you. Well, he doesn't know and neither do we. That's a straight answer, if ever there was one. And a good luck to the lad. He's one of the best German players I've ever seen and, uh, my, my, might turn out to be the best ever. You never know, do you? Lorraine wins Stanley against Anastasia Dobromyslova. This for the right to meet uh, Fallon Sherrick in the final of the Women's BDO World Trophy. And uh, two cracking players. It's the number one seed against the number five seed. And to introduce them to you, once again, little Richard Ashdown. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the 2018 BDO World Trophy. And it's time for our second women's semi-final here at Preston Guildhall. We welcome to the stage a former Winmore World Masters and BDO World Trophy Champion. Three times the Lakeside World Champion from Russia with Love, Anastasia Dobromoslova! We now introduce the number one seed, the reigning England Open and England Classic Champion. 
She's the reigning Winmore World Masters Champion, England's Lorraine Wing Stanley. Here we go then, second women's semi-final. This would have every right on another day, another tournament, to be the final itself. Two really high quality operators here. Lorraine Wynne Stanley is the number one seed. Reigning defending Masters champion Anastasia Dobromislova, a three-time world champion. She won this event. In its first iteration in 2014, she'd dearly like to do it again. She's come through two games just as Lorraine has. 4-0 against Rihanna Sullivan, 4-2 against Lisa Ashton last night. Which, despite the quality of Anastasia, was something of, a, of an upset against a very, very talented Thank you, ladies Lisa and Ashton. Gentlemen. Lorraine first has been Lorraine silky smooth, 4-1 and 4-0 through. This is her toughest test. Yes, uh, any victory over Lisa Ashton is a notable one, whoever you are. Similarly, Glenn Durham uh, in the men's game. 100! Uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful performance. In beating Rihanna Sullivan in the first round 4-0, she hit one at 180. Did, did a 180 in that game against Lisa Ashton, but did, if you remember, in the last leg, kick off with 140, 140, 140. That's how good she is. And it's nice to see... 42! Anastasia playing as well, in my view, now as she was when she won those three world titles. Got that lovely straight action high in front of the face, through the nose, down the line darts, and whilst those weren't, believe you me, there will be some. Rain, as you mentioned, Steve, World Masters champion, big, big event, and the really, really big one, the world title, might come her way yet, before too long. 41. Both from the northwest of England, uh, Buxton, it is considered the northwest of England, in deep Derbyshire, but... Uh, very much part of the high peak. 25. Peak district. And uh, Anastasia from the Wirral. South Merseyside, I suppose you would say. It's Cheshire, Ellesmere Port. 100. Not far from Liverpool, like, you know. Just south of the river, like. <laughs> she has got one of the most unique accents I can think of hearing the combination of, uh, of Russian and Scouse is, uh, <laughs> is quite something. 111 win Stanley, 275 way behind here, but making inroads. Oh, look at that, 130 just like that. Yeah, great darts when I stay as yet. She might not get another one though. She will now. 51. And a stage you require 145. And a really big checkout. Not likely to be achieved all that often. 65. I do see them the from time to time. 60. Tops then. 20. Not quite. Anastasia, you require 80. I'll tell you what, she was unlucky there, wasn't she? They were only just over the bar. So, 80. Now, another one of those. And now, she's going for the double top. 60. Lorraine, you require 40. 
Second bite at the apple then for Lorraine. We'll have to go down to tens. Twenty. It's a bit of double trouble for and Lorraine Stanley. Anastasia requires Stanley. twenty. Now then, her turn to go for double ten. They both miss double top, Game but not double leg. promise Anastasia over on double slogan. ten. Second Takes Anastasia the first leg. First. Game and now throws first. Eighty-one. Was on the Lorraine win Stanley throw, which will be one hundred and twenty-one. Annoying. To Lorraine, and in this short format, first to five. Not a lot of wiggle room to lose your throw. Anastasia De Bronsler responding well to Lorraine's couple of trebles with a couple of her own. Yeah, brilliant. A ton ahead. 100. So, scores level. Let's start again. 280 versus 280. 60. Now then, a ton plus here would be very, very nice indeed for Win Stanley. Which, by the way, is a 60. district of Wigan. Win Stanley. It's on the west side of Wigan. Just off the A49. Just thought I'd slip in. 100! Is of no value whatsoever. But that's a good first dart. That is of value. One hundred. Anastasia, you require one hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty then for Dobromislova, Shanghai. Can't do it now. Fifty-five. Lorraine, you require one hundred and twenty. Lorraine wants one hundred and twenty as well. Won't do it now. 38. Anastasia, you require 65. 65 for Anastasia. Having hit that 55 before. 62. Now she's got to go 12 bull. Bull beckons. Shouldn't have to be going for that, really. It was that poor first start. She'd admit Lorraine, it. You require 82. That caused that situation. Now 82 for Lorraine Win Stanley. She's got the 18, so that's 64 left. Now she's got to go for the 14 to leave the bull. Now, can she get... No, the answer is 52. it's the first dart in a way that... Uh, Anastasia require 44. Let's them down there, but now still having a go at 44. Double 16. Fancy this, just over the top. Oh, and it was as well, but didn't go in. Well, well, Lorraine well. Lorraine require 30. Lorraine wins Stanley. Splits it, but she does it first dart. She'll get another dart here. Double six. Gets yes! Shot on the gets second it. Leg. Lorraine wins Stanley. One apiece, a break back. Third leg, it's Lorraine. For Lorraine wins Stanley, who did Game not on. want to leave it too long until she did that to Anastasia's throw. One apiece, they stand there. Both have struggled a little on the doubles so far. Been pretty even Steven when it comes to the scoring. 49. Close game this as we might have expected. 80. Yes, Anastasia 80. didn't expect as easier victory as uh, she, su she sustained she managed to get yesterday against Lisa Ashton 4-2 um, and I, I briefly spoke to Lisa afterwards 140. she agreed with me that had she taken out the 160 she missed the tops to follow a 115 I think it would have put her either 2-2 two -two or maybe even 2-1 up 39 might have been very different but that's the way it is small margin small 
Margin of errors and needing no second invitation. Anastasia swept from that point on. 140. And she did it by scoring 140s, which is exactly what she's done in this leg. Two on the spin. 41. Yep. Kicked off with 49, but two 140s following, and so now, even though she started second, she looks as though she might well finish first. 45. 127 left. 100. An important last Anastasia start it gives Lorraine something to go at should Anastasia not take out 127. Treble 19 for boys, how she can do it now. So Lorraine will get a shout. 99. Sir Ashton, Lorraine you, like you said, very nearly do this. Lorraine and Stanley looking to go one more. There we go. We know. Dobromislova will be back for double 14 16. and this was one of the doubles she hit against Lisa I recall found it uh, no problem at all and again third. that's not Anastasia a bad double is it Fourth leg, it's Anastasia to throw for the Russian against the darts all three legs so far against throw and a very clinical way of taking out the double 14 no problem. 95. Only needed one dart on that occasion. Anastasia. Both players have struggled with the doubles so far. Not in that leg. Lorraine. Looking to bounce back. Starts the leg well with a 1, 2, 3. Will be irritated. Stepping right into the treble one. Well, not as irritated as Anastasia, mind you, he's done it twice. Only 66. 60. Get a right response in Scotland when somebody scores 66, and I go, that's the year England won the World Cup. 50. Well, as I say, with Glenn Durant in a few days' time. Was good fun, always well received. 60. Oh, back to back 60s. Because well, it was 67 that Scotland won at Wembley and claimed that they were the world champions because they'd beaten the world champions on their own midding. That's how it works. Beat England 1 0, yes, I remember. 100. When it stays on. <laughs> Let's get back to the darts, eh? Lorraine wants to get back to the treble. Yeah. Hasn't found it in the last two visits. 94. Does find it there in the 18. It's crucial. Last dart, perhaps. It gives her an out. But the promised level will look to set this up from 185. 60. Now it's even Lorraine Stevens this leg. A pivotal leg, too, if it goes 2 2 in the melting pot. If it goes 3 1, well on her way. Oh, look at this bullseye for a brilliant, brilliant. Oh, what an effort. Oh, another millimetre to the right. And that would have been a terrific effort. 164 almost. Now, 125. 95. So 95 leaves 30, but 25 wanted by Win Stanley. The most important darts of this match so far for both players. All oh, moved away. A double four. Game oh, what a great finish, play. and that Lorraine deserved Stanley. after that wonderful effort against 164. Uh, first. Almost took Game out the 164, so yeah, thoroughly deserving of that. Kept a nerve, got the double four in the end. 2 2, and good game five. now. Yeah. Not that it wasn't before. Uh, yeah, but you can say that again. We are in for a close one, I think. Neither player has held their throw. 140. Anastasia is after big scores again on Lorraine's darts. 100. 
hundred from Lorraine. And Anastasia's back again. 83. Yes. Nip and tuck. 100. Tons precious. Eighty-one. Treble twenties at the end of a three-dart combination equally thus. Seventy-one. Bullseyes. Brilliant. Did that because if you hit the 25, she would still have left herself a finish. Lorraine, you require 145. More favourable. Yeah, she slightly, came up a couple of games ago, 145, didn't it? And it was for Lorraine. 41. I forget what she scored on that occasion, but 104 left. Oh, this is gettable. 82. She going the ball or treble 14, I think. 68 left, so. Ah, uh, eight left now. This is an under Lorraine pressure McCoy shot, if ever there was to hold a throw. Needs the treble. Gets the treble. Double 16 to hold. Oh, 88. She was. Anastasia, you require no eight. Is in it. The double that Win Stanley struck just a moment ago. Not going to go the way of the Russian, though. Needs to just loop this over the top of there. Four. Well, she did. But what an opportunity two. now for Win Stanley to take the lead for the very first time in the match. Never been ahead so far. Oh, that's Eight. unlucky. Great effort. Now another go and at double two. Four. Two twos are four. It's two to the score. Double one. Oh, this could be one of those legs. Could be. But it is. But it is. So for the first time in the match, Lorraine Winstanley takes the lead. Three two. One hundred. Anastasia will want to put that out of her mind promptly. 140. And in truth, they're being pretty badly brought down by their profligacy at the end on the doubles. You can see the nine dart averages well up in the mid 80s. A little bit more than that, but respectable at the very least. But the Total averages have been really run down. 26. One hundred. Anastasia leaves the finish. Oh, hello. Yes. One hundred. That's what we've been waiting for from the rain wind Stanley. It only really gives a half a shout because Anastasia should set this up. 57. I've done a bit the of a better job of it, mind. 5-5 five, five then. That's her second 1-8 of the tournament. She did get one in the opening uh, match against Paula Jacqueline, whom she beat 4-1. And she took out 105 on that occasion as well. But uh, 104 rather more problematic for her than that was uh, 155 I mean rather more problematic 41. for her than that was now 104 for the Bromislova uh, no 43 left thinking which way is it 3 or is it 11 3 64. for top will she get the a go at it 114 114 then for Lorraine need to travel not that one 
seconds that she couldn't finish, but she set it up kindly. And De Bromislova has given chances away from this position. Doesn't hear, and that's important. She then holds her throw. Three apiece. We thought this one might be close. We thought it might go the distance. And John, we've not 100. seen anything so far that has gone against that original claim. Sixty. Yes, uh, Anastasia originates from Kalinin in, uh, in Russia. It was the Soviet Union when she was born there. And uh, moved to this country some years ago now. It was the darts that brought her here. Through the professional dart player and uh, settled in the northwest of England. Mother of uh, Joseph, 17 month old. 140. Looked after by Gran. One hundred and twenty-one. The range required. One hundred and twenty-one. Not in pole position in this leg. No, that's the range weakest visit by some way. She's gone ten, ten forty, ten forty, leading to that. Anastasia away back. Lorraine will have a shot at 64 for 100. a 4-3 lead. Lorraine so requires 64. from home in the final. 16 again for the double. Gets Game it! Big dart. Massive Eight dart that for Lorraine. To throw first. So 4-3 in this uh, ding-dong. 140. Quite a humdinger. But not far short. Little quarter asked for and certainly little given. 60. I did look it up some time ago, a city of about 400,000, roughly the size of Bristol, say. 60! Uh, no, very close to, not in Liverpool, but very close to Merseyside. And that's a 180! But would you believe is only the second for her in this tournament but she's had so many other big scores come close to them 60 Anastasia require 121 gives her a shot gives her an escape route forty-one left she was aware 81. of the fact that Win Stanley was two hundred behind and uh, set it up nicely Possible 13 dart leg here for 4 4 and into the decider we will go. 60. Anastasia require 4. Time on her side, but she won't want to make use of it. Double 10 for a 14 dart leg. Yes, and, and the four leg. apiece it is. Well, 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 the first three Nothing legs of the match were breaks of throw. Since then, they've gone with Game throw, and uh, here we are. All on this, and Win Stanley winning the ball in the practice area has the advantage of throwing first. 15 three figure scores, 15 three figure scores to both players. And if you think that tells a story of a close game, 81. right, both of them now are just coming to the boil perhaps here. Anastasia going out in 14 darts there, the leg before on her fifteen. Yes, quality. And 3-2 um, at the break 
oh sorry, 3-2 after five legs. 100! The rain had gone into the lead for the first time in the match. Four three for the second time in the match. And if there's a third time in the match for her, it'll be the last, because she will be in the final. But if not, then that's the who will be playing Fallon Sherrick later this evening. When we have the two men's semi-finals, the women's 100. final. And, of course, the men's final. Always one of the great knights of darting. Prowess. On your television screens. 60. Oh, that's not a great visit from Anastasia. Lorraine knows she has six darts. And one nine four. Another would go so handy. 100. She'll be pleased with a ton. He should be first to the double. Especially now. 60. Yes, 94 against 140. 94. The advantage of throwing first means that she's got this crack. 69. She'll go for 19s here. Bullseye will give her the match. Oh, so 69. close. 25. Almost in the final will that final little exchange. And now Dobromyslova, 140 needed. So, at least get a ton, she'll be hoping. At least get a ton, she does so. Couldn't get a game closer. Winstanley is probably going to have two darts at a double. Yes, two at double eight for the match. And she only needs the one. A win for Winstanley in the end. Lorraine Winstanley with an excellent leg there. And uh, what a finish to what an excellent game that was. Four four and into the decider and in the end it's Lorraine Win Stanley so close to winning it on the bull but the 25 presented no problem whatsoever nine double eight and I think we saw there the importance of winning the darts in the practice room and having the advantage in that final leg because Dubrovislova was on top she was and you can see there from the stats in terms of the averages she was as well the doubles percentage, even there, is higher. The legs one throwing first is higher. You would imagine, looking at that, that Anastasia got the win. But the one that isn't in her favour is the most important one at the top. Lorraine Win stanley heads through to the World Trophy Final, where she will meet Fallon Sherrick tonight in Preston. We will hear from victorious Lorraine coming up after the break.
So here we are and uh, another fine game. Lorraine wins Stanley, the number one seed, goes through to the final. What a game that's going to be against Fallon Sherrick later this evening. And uh, two men's games left to determine who will be playing in the semis later. The winner of the one game between Williams and Baker coming up will play the winner of Labanowskis and Durant. But let's go over now and speak to Lorraine Wynne Stanley. No doubt she'll be absolutely delighted, Steve. Thank you very much, John. Lorraine, big congratulations. You've finally done it. You're into the final of the World Trophy. That was an all-out war out there on the stage, and you shaded it by the finest of margins. How do you feel? It was far too close for my liking, that's all I can say. It was always going to be a good battle between me and Anna. Uh, such close friends. Really, really struggled to turn my emotion off against her. And um, love you, Anna. <laughs> well, we did see, actually, when you, when you came out of the, for the entrance, it was very much game faces for the pair of you. It was very relaxed in here, ahead of the match, and as soon as you came onto the stage, it was all about business. And we saw that from almost the very first leg. It was nip and tuck. No one held their throw until the fifth leg. Was that a game you were expecting? We know we have to because we know how, how each other plays because we play pairs together. So from playing together to playing against each other, it's... it's it's a real mixture of emotions, um, but we know we both know what we can do, and um, it's a case of you've got to put your, your game face on because if you don't, you, you're going to go home. So it it was my turn this time. She did me last time, so it's, it was my turn. <laughs> and in speaking of your turn, you might say the same about the final as well. You're up against Fallon Sherrick, who's like yourself played really, really well this week. It should be a great final. How much looking forward to it? Fallon played awesome in the semi, 91 average, that's awesome, um, I need to pick my game up, but I'm still confident um, in the way, in my game, uh, I've got it in there, so hey, I've made a final, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> well, we can't wait to watch you, congratulations again. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, congratulations to her, now two guys who have uh, made their way to the men's quarterfinals, our Scott Baker from uh, Tipton in West Midlands and Jim Williams from the Welsh Borders in Powys and they both played exceptionally well so this is going to be a cracking game first to seven legs let's get over to our MC Richard Ashdown Richard, Scott Baker, Jim Williams all yours mate Ladies and gentlemen, we continue with our men's quarterfinals here are the 2018 BDO World Trophy the first man we bring to the stage is from England, the reigning Welsh Masters and German Masters Champion, the mod, Scott Baker! Scott's opponent is from Wales, the current holder of five BDO World Ranking titles, the former World Cup singles champion, the Quiff, Jim Williams. Well, here we are, the Welshman Jim Williams, the Englishman Scott Baker, and uh, placing the uh, semi-finals of the World Arts Trophy at stake. Had a wonderful competition, obviously, both of them, but uh, it's going to get better for one of them, that's for sure. And uh, a cracking game in prospect, because Williams has had a good 6-3 win over Dirk Telnikers, and... Uh, 
another good 6-2 win over William Borland, the Scotsman. Talnikas, of course, from uh, the Netherlands. And he's thrown pretty well in both games. And Baker, absolutely amazing in his first round game with Scott Waits. That went 6-5, we recall. He hit 5 one 1-6-1 checkout, 1-12 checkout, 12 data. First like is Scott the two first. Really Came demonstrated. Up that he is a fine player. Struggled a bit more against Andy um, Balans in the uh, next round, 6.41. Came back at him well, but didn't he, uh, the Belgian? But uh, that was yesterday, yesterday's history. Today is still a mystery. It really is, because we've got two players here. They both played well, both good scorers, in particular. And we are expecting a close one. I mean, that's safe to say. Jim Williams is the number four seed in this 45. one. Well ranked number four as well. Yeah, a great 2017. Three open titles. One of the name, 40. In France. Scott Baker, though, has the more recent win on the tour. German Masters champion in 2018. His debut at this competition, and he's made some impression. He's already taken this checkout out in round one. He won't be doing it here, though. Well, in that German Masters, you know, he beat Mikael Unterbergen Bergen 6-1. Under Buckner, I should say, 6-1 on his own mid-in. Great 180 there from Williams. Scott Uniquois, 106. First of many, I'd wager, in this one as well. More than likely. Tops here. 86. Jim Uniquois, so 76. 76. That's what he's... That's 180. He's earned him. 61 left. He now will go 11 ball. He, he really needed to at least be in the 20. Should have had one data to double. He wants double 14 here. Played each way there. Shouldn't have to stop and think, Jimmy Boy. You should be able to go straight at the number. 48. Got to know beforehand. I always think it amazes me when players don't because that is a standard way of going out. Uh, on 61 with two darts. 12. Oh, well, he's got another Jimmy chance here at double 14. 28. Yeah, Baker just nipping next door yeah, on double 10 and it's cost him Jim Williams takes out line double 14 at the first. second attempt and breaks the throw immediately in this quarter final and he's straight into the treble on his own throw as well One good start 40. from Williams and Baker's in again he had to overcome a little bit of adversity in his last 16 match against Andy Vartans. he only really ever known success at this tournament. He was full flight against Waits in a brilliant match to and fro. Never dipped his level. Superb near 100 average against Bartons. He had to sit on the back foot. He had to overcome a bit of adversity. Well, he was 4-1 up and deservedly so easily the best player up to that uh, stage great. good darts there from Williams and uh, 177 he's pretty handy at hitting those he's hit 60. one in Did each of his previous games 84. now he's got one here and um, sorry um, Martin's came back well, didn't he, with his uh, three legs on the trot. Really hit him hard. Yeah, he was rocking with uh, Baker. He line. might be rocking Jim again Williams. now because that's 2-0 for Williams. Williams. That one Demon. seven seven, Brilliant darts. Good as a 180. 81. He had a 180 against Telnikas and a 177. He had two 180s against Borland and a 177. So far he's got one 180 here and a 177. 59. The 177 machine <laughs> from the Welsh borders. That's an unfortunate dart from 39. Baker. And he might well be struggling in this leg as well. Jim Williams can put up a score. It's a 12 dart leg actually with a missed dart and a double for Jim Williams in leg two. 
14. Another bounce out. Two on the spin for both of our players here. I've seen a few of those today, actually. More today than I think we've seen in the entirety of the competition. But Baker has finally oh, joined the party. No, <laughs> a little no, almost no, nod eight. to say that's where you are. That's his eighth of the tournament. Got five in that remarkable first round game against Scott Waite. And, uh, still one of the top three matches that we've seen since Wednesday. It was on Wednesday, wasn't it? May have been Thursday. Wednesday. Still for me the match of the tournament so yeah. far that. Yeah. Not just in terms of drama, which it had a plenty. Just 50 the standard, the flow. Really Scott's really quite 141. So 141, getting the shout. Let down in the first leg by Miss Darts at a double. Don't hang about here. 89. 89 to leave, 52, 200 ahead. Yeah, Jim struggling with trebles in this leg. Only hit one. 59. Scott's really quite 52. 15 attempts. Double 16. Needed yeah, two attempts, Jim but double Berger. 16 goes. First Scott leg on the board Berger. for Four Scott Baker. Jim the troll first. And Game even on. at this very early stage in the match, you do just sense he needed that. Yeah. Well, it is only first to seven if you go 3 0 down. 14. Got a lot on. But um, he's only one break of throw down. 100. If he breaks back, he has the advantage because, of course, he won the throw, Baker. So. It was important, our leg certainly had to hold his throw. 55. Uh, but uh, capable of getting back into this game, he's so quick fire. His scoring is remarkable at times. He, he does pepper that treble 20, doesn't he? Well, when he's on song, he's such a brilliant player to watch. Yeah. Fast players are always better to watch when they're hitting the target. They're always the worst to watch when they're not. It, it's 85. A Well, that second dart was a complete misnomer because the first and the third were superb. Well, he had 100, 306 before he went on that visit and uh, had One no intention five. of going anything other than for the treble 20. He's on a bogey, but not for long. Treble 18, 83. unlucky. Jim, you require 116. A lot of players go for the 19s on this. Makes sense, because C wants double top now. And yeah, that's the reason. You can hit the single or the treble, or you can hit the treble or the single. But either way, you're going to leave yourself top. Good thinking. 1-1-6. Rather better there than when he got the treble 11. Wondered what he wanted. In an earlier leg. And just see that. Baker getting his scoring going. 110 nine dart average is brilliant. He's just let him down. He's just let himself down rather a touch when it's come to setting up the double on a few legs. One on the down, well, He's just tasked with firing them at treble 20. He's up there with anyone in this competition. He has to dance around a bit and he's a little bit less comfortable. 58. Well in front in this left zone. One hundred. Actually, the maximum there, but it wasn't to be. Oh, he's set it up nicely here, hasn't he? Could be three-two in a minute. 13 darted, you reckon? 95. Scott, you require 14. Right. Find out. Yeah, that's Easy. Game Shaw on the fifth flag. Scott Baker, six flag is Jim the Troll first. I do like watching game on. Scott Baker play. I think one of the reasons behind that is because, and I know it isn't, but he's got such a marvellously casual action makes it look simple 
Now, it's the first time I've seen him, not today, but when he played his first round game. And uh, I've never seen him on television, uh, to be honest. 16. I've commentated on a lot of BDO competitions over the last four or five years, and uh, he's not been featured in them. And uh, 100. it's a delight to see as was young Borland in his first round game the Scots, the Scots youngster 100 have that casual approach they, there is intent on winning as One anybody it's just 40. as important to them as anybody else it's just the wonderful way in which they can go up and just go bang 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 and seemingly not have to work for it 100. Scott's your requirement. 10, 10, 10, 40. 1, He's done this before. Oh, he nearly did it again. Yes, One in that remarkable uh, game against Scott Wakes, what a finish that 102. was, wasn't it? 102 for Williams. Very important, this 97. It's still on. It's definitely on now. Tops here. A great uh, recovery. He didn't intend that one. five, but he certainly Two intended Williams. the treble 19 and the tops. And uh, that means Williams goes into the break with a 4-2 lead, an excellent 102 finish. He has had a 116 finish in this game as well. And uh, there you have it. Four out of six at the doubles for uh, Williams and only two out of seven for Baker. Maybe that's the difference. Good game though, I like this game. Definitely gonna come back for more soon.
back. Good game here. Really good game. Scott Baker. The mod. Up against the Quist. The, uh, the 60s versus the Millennials, one could say. Yes, and that'll teach you to start on a pineapple before the right before we go on air. Sound like it's got the trophies. And, uh, it's been a long session, John. I needed a sugar <laughs> kick. <laughs> Don't know where these players. I get thought I'd leave you from. to it. You see, yeah. one hundred. Got a mouthful of pineapple tart or whatever it was. <coughs> Very tasty it was too. Fifty-seven. Yes. Speaking of tasty, this match has been that. It's been really palatable. Both 59. players playing well. You can see there by the big scores. Baker actually is ahead in just about every stat, which is pretty surprising given he's the man who's 4-2 down. down. A bit waste won the doubles. And Jim Williams has been really clinical. Sixteen. Big ton plus outs as well as Jim. Yep. One one six a one oh two. Fifty eight. One one six you'll remember was via the nineteen. Ninety seven double top. And then two legs later got the one oh two that took us into the break. And uh, gave him that two leg advantage. 60. But now, looking to peg one back, he's got to. 60. Hold his throw here, Baker. Otherwise, he gives himself a very difficult task. The West Midlands County player against the man who plays for Radnor. Montgomery, Radnor and Montgomery, former counties themselves, now in Towis. 37. He's safe in the knowledge, Scott, that Williams couldn't finish on 176, but he'd have liked to have set that up a bit better because Williams is going to set himself up nicely here, can take his pick. One on and Lovely. 36. Scott should require 88. Suddenly 88 becomes... A must. Now that's why. Oh, he wants double 18. Yeah. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. And I was going to say that's why it's always Eight better to go the 20 the route. Because 16 on. left him 72. And there was no way he could use the bull. But he hit what he had to hit. And, and so therefore one can't be critical. Yet another 177 from uh, Jim Williams. He hits those for fun, doesn't he? He's second of the match. 81. So it was just as well, really, that Baker got the treble 12, double 18, 72 in two darts. Fine, absolutely. But uh, had he One not hit 14. the treble 12, he'd have been in lumber. If you go for seven, if, he go, if you go for 14. what he wanted with the, by the 20 route, 88 it was, wasn't it? At least you give yourself 18 bull afterwards if you miss the treble. It's rare that Jim Williams doesn't find that 19 slice, if not the treble. 60. Jim Unicorn, 88. 88. Scott Baker, miles back. 48. Yeah, so 40 comfortably left. Now there's 180 coming here. Here we go. I knew as soon as that first one was in, we were going to get it. it it's a rhythm player. Bang, bang, bang. Leaves him on 40, but it may be too little too late. He'd be hoping. But he's uh, hoping for too much because Williams on those doubles has been absolutely tremendous. Uh, doesn't matter if you miss with your first. Have you got a second? It, it, that, that missed data to double, which we sometimes look at in the stats as a missed data to double really hasn't cost him because he's followed it up with the very next dart and uh, one day we'll have stats that actually 100. show us uh, although that's our job as commentators I suppose to keep people informed <laughs> 60 yeah 
think that just showcases how clinical Jim Williams has been. It's not been at his vintage. scoring best. It's been good, but his doubling has been excellent. Darts is a wonderful game. Rhythm, flowing moods. And therefore, I, I'm not too keen on overstressing stat after stat after stat. They are important. One hundred and fourteen. In the end, it's all about letting the arrows go, hitting the target. Or Sixteen. Not. Jim, you require one hundred and twenty-four. Baker's left himself short. Williams is wanting double eight for a one, two, four. Oh, oh and lucky. Eight. Good Great effort. effort. Yeah. Good effort. No harm done. Baker way back. Despite that 180 we saw. 59. Jim, you require 16. Double four. Yeah, gets that one. Nice Scott Jim Baker Williams. was lying in wait. And one, two, two. Got himself somewhat back Ten into the leg. Is Jim, but the Jim Williams hit is one from the semi finals hit. Scott Baker has to win all four of the remaining legs. And when you throw whirlwind darts like he does and get on a roll, it's not impossible but it's getting on that roll and rocking your opponent who looks at the moment pretty unrockable I think he's as steady as a rock if I can put it that way looks pretty sound to me Jim Williams has done all week big Liverpool football fan you know Williams just like you Steve Got good taste. 100. Oh, good again from Baker. Oh, Throws it in. So casually. It's another 184. And it might be academic. It won't be. It still might be, but he stays in it. A little while longer. 83. Yeah, take this Scott out. It'll be a six dart. It could be a five dart. Two six one. Could be double twelve. Sixty-nine. This is what I mean by getting Jimmy on a roll. Ricard, he could have finished that off and then suddenly into it, he'd have won a leg against the throw and get on a roll. Bullseye here for the match. No hey. problem. That's the way to win it with the bullseye. An excellent performance from Jim Williams. He is a very neat and tidy and effective player. And the way that he has performed in every one of his games this week, there is no doubt that he is a threat to everybody else left in this competition. And there aren't so many left. Jim Williams will be in the semi-final. We'll find out soon who he's going to play. But there we are. The stats tell them own story. 7-3 to Williams. And... Um, what was his average? Actually, Scott Baker's slightly different, uh, higher average, but it's the uh, stats on the um, doubles that make the difference. 64% as against 30. It really does. And you can see that Jim Williams winning every leg in which he threw first. He played well when he needed to. He makes his way through. He will face either of Darius Slavonauskas or Glenn that is our final match of the afternoon and it's coming up next on Free Sports.
Well, what an excellent performance that was from Jim Williams. 7-3 is victory over Scott Baker. Uh, and a wonderful uh, all-round show by the Welshman. So, let's hear what he's got to say. He doesn't quite yet know who he's playing in the semi-final later tonight. It's the winner of that last game that we're going to see soon. He's with Steve. Yeah, thank you very much, John. Jim, congratulations on another win in this competition through now to the semi-finals. I know you're a man who takes it very much one game at a time. How do you look back on that one? Yeah, it's nice to win. Um, Scott, he's obviously a great player um, and he's playing really well at the moment. So, yeah, to get through that is good. I felt he was scoring like very well, to be fair. So my finishing got me through, so I'm good. That's good. Yeah, the finishing was particularly clinical. Quite a few ton plus outs. Seemed to like that double top as well. And talk to me a little bit about your cover shooting as well, because you've hit more 177s than anyone else in the tournament. Maybe more than you have 180s. It seems to be a real strength for you. Yeah, it's going all right for me at the moment. So it, it just helps so much when, you, when your cover shots there. Just it, it takes the pressure off um, your scoring and everything. So it, yeah, it's brilliant. But my, I said my first start, there was uh, so many treble fives on my first start. So need to uh, sharpen up on that a bit. Do you feel generally in a pretty good place? I know you won't look too far ahead in terms of the semi-final or anything like that, but do you feel generally like you're playing well, you've got the game to, to give it a really good go? Yeah, I'm just comfortable at the moment. Um, like I say, you just play every leg as it is. I, I try and win every leg, so it's, yeah. Well, you're giving yourself the best chance to do that. Congratulations on making it through. Good luck later on. Good man. Thank you, buddy. Yes, well done, Jim. Excellent and uh, always modest, always prepared to give a little bit of uh, credit to his opponent. And he's quite right, Scott Baker's an excellent player. But uh, no doubt about it, Jim deserved to win that. Now, we'll find out in a few minutes who is going to play in the semi-final later on. It's going to be Glenn Durham, possibly, or Darius Labanauskas. Anyway, the best thing to do now is to get them on stage, get that game underway. So it's over now to Richard Ashdown. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to complete the men's semi-final lineup here at the 2018 BDO World Trophy. We now welcome to the stage a Lakeside World Championship quarter-finalist playing in his second BDO World Trophy quarter-final. Lithuania's Lucky D, Darius Labanowska. We now bring to the stage our number one seed, the former two-time Winmore World Masters champion, the reigning two-time Lakeside World Champion, England's Daza Glenn Dara. go then final quarter final of the competition this to decide who faces Jim Williams in tonight's semi Darius Labanauskas from Lithuania the five-time Lithuanian Open champion as well his best run has been to this stage in the world trophy it was a couple of years ago 
and he has beaten Glenn Durrant before in this competition a couple of years ago. He hit 102 average that night and he'll be hoping to summon the spirit of that evening as well. He's come through fairly comfortably without really having to scale massive heights in this tournament. 6-2 against Martin Phillips and 6-4 against Richie Edwards. Scrapped through really. But Glenn Durrant has really been his mercurial you, best. I don't think he's actually won a leg under 15, uh, over 15 darts Just yet. one actually. He's had 12 winning legs. 6-2 against uh, David Edwards. 6-1 against Tony O'Shea. And his 12 winning legs. He's 515 darters, 314 darters, a couple of 13 darters, 10 darter. He hasn't hit a 12 darter or an 11 darter. Isn't he all? Isn't he useless? But uh, he had one leg. I think it was in 19 darts. 50. Uh, an ifish leg with, against Tony O'Shea. And, um, but if, if that's the worst, uh, that's a wonderful, wonderful array of, of darts. And, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he did the same again. He is that type of individual who just turn up and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Such a professional individual. But he's made a bit of a shaky start here, John. Darius has started well. 1 3 1 and a 1 4. See, Glenn has veered into the fives a few times already, but that's a bit more on track. 125 from Dazza to keep him in touch. But he's still best part of 100. In fact, 104 behind. Now a little bit further. Darius might be relishing the fact that he's playing and uh, being in the underdog role here. He's been a better player in both of his matches so far. I'm not sure it's sat too comfortably with him, to be honest. 140. Darius should yeah. require 108. Well, he, he, however well he might have started Labanowskis, he knows that he's got to maintain it. Uh, it's uh, 51 left. May stay at 19. Yeah, for double 16. For a 12 dart finish. 76. Well, he'll come back for an attempt at a 13 dart finish. Uh, because Durant, as you've mentioned, has uh, struggled at the start and again drifting. That's a perfect correction. 135. 51 left for Durant. So he knows that uh, he might get a chance. He might get a chance. But he might not. The first leg. So that's a good first leg there. Leg. 14 darts for Labanowskis. But uh, that's with throw, of course. And uh, Durant, no doubt, will warm to the task. 140. Kick off a second leg from Glenn Durant. Labanowskis will just be taking this one leg at a time. Has to. One dart at a time. I think. Well, if he keeps doing yeah. that, then that will certainly stand him in good stead. I think the fact he's done it before will give him the confidence. He knows he can. One hundred. This is a slightly different Glenn Durrant to the one he beat two years ago. Since won two Lakeside World Championships. Yes, yeah, Sturrant has grown 85. in stature over that time. He, oh, he's always been a very good player and uh, really made his name s a good seven or eight years ago. But uh, he's added something to his game. You can't add any more determination than he's always had. But uh, he, he, I suppose in his case, it's putting in the practice and uh, it's, it's all about adding to the ambition, the hunger. The desire. And he's 81. certainly done that. Glenn, you require 161. Now then, treble 17 leaves the ball. Well, he doesn't, he's not gone that way because of Labanowskis' situation. 129. 129, leaves 32. And uh, automatically you think, yeah, treble 17 ball. But when he's in that situation... And when you're as good as he is. Could be 24 left after this. Well, 64. Glenn, you require 32. For 1-1 one, one, then. Oh, 
Game shot on the second leg. Only Glenn 14 Owens. darts required that Third time. Leg, it's a high standard first. start. Mabinowskis as well. He's going with him. He was lying in wait. Yes, 64. Yeah, absolutely. It was very similar to the first leg. It was a mirror image of it in that sense. Durant was lying in wait. 51. 96. Um... Coming down with this one and picking it off very nicely. And 134. Oh, look at that. 134. No problem at all. Didn't like the lie of the dart in the 20 sector. Well, Lovanauskas knows he's got to play better than he did, as you've more or less ascertained yourself, Steve. Uh, despite his, his, his comfortable victory over Martin Phillips and his slightly less comfortable one over Richie 100. Edwards. He really does have to raise his game for this and so far he has. And uh, that's to his credit. Long way to go, of course. Fifty-three. And I think it's his lowest score of the match so far, 53. And Glenn is the sort of fella who will punish that. Doesn't he just? Game's first maximum. I think we mentioned this earlier, Joe. Not a prolific scorer of 180s, Glenn Durrant, but a prolific scorer, nevertheless. Yeah, three 180s in his first round victory. Just the one against Tony O'Shea. 85. Just the one in this Glenn one so require far. 87. To do what he does, you have to be hitting other big trebles and doubles 51. as well. He'll be annoyed with that. Despite the fact that he should come back and have another go, he'll be annoyed because he could have had a, an 11 or a 12 data. And he doesn't like giving his opponent even the slightest sniff. If he can help it. Game there we the are, a 13 data to follow his 14 data. Fourth leg, it's Glenn to throw first. And now Game throwing on. first, so a break of throw. Oh, brilliant. Perfect start from Glenn Durrant. And if he can continue in this vein, it is going to be nigh on impossible for Darius Labanauskas or indeed anyone to come back at this man. He's in again. He's in again. Oh, that one just drops below. Yeah, he just shook his head there. He knows one man in this tournament who, once he's got five perfect darts, you're thinking about a nine darter. It's Glenn Durant, an average of 118.13. If he sustains that over the match, and he's capable, there are very few players in the world who are capable of sustaining that sort of standard. I would say certainly Durant is one of them. Naturally, he's 90. first to a double. 180, 140. 140, rather 135. Double 16 then. Thirty-eight. Oh, a little bit shaky again, but it's surprising when he misses, isn't it? It really is. I mean, he's got time on his side, and it's not the end of the world. But when he's in the kind of mood and kind of form that he's been showing here, you are, aren't you? It's quite surprised 99. to see two a couple of missed darts to double. And not only are we quite surprised, James shot on the fourth leg. Glenn Glenn will Owens. be disappointed with that. It will annoy him. Yeah, but he won't show it because he's 
concentrate so much on the next first. leg. It, it would game be right. rather at the end of the game if he were yeah. to, um, if it, it, you know, if he were to fall short of his own high standards, that he'd say, "Well, I missed a lot of darts and doubles." But at least the state of the game is such where he doesn't really have to concern himself too much. But because he sets himself such high standards, that's why he's so good. Ninety-seven. Fifty-seven. Yes, in darts we have current form and we have durant form, and uh, durant form at the moment is. Uh, I've seen him play better than that which uh, witnessed this week but uh, not very often 59. yeah it really is worth pointing out that 59 the sort of numbers that Durant's putting up it is as good as you're going to get anyway He is that good. This is a lax leg for him, actually. O only, I say only, only 97, 93 and 84. Criminal. <laughs> well, you get some of the big boys on the other side of the PDC on a roll and, uh, and, and they're just as magic. They're 86. Magic. Of course, they throw faster anyway. Uh, I always think, it, as we've already discussed, the quicker throwers always seem to be more entertaining. What you are as effective, though. Yeah. You're not going to change, are you? Not when you can do it like that. 159, a bogey. 169, 166, 163. 91. 165. Glenn, you require 87. 59. Well, bogey numbers. 87, treble 17 for double 18. Now, bullseye, that's the reason he went that way. 38. And, uh, he was going for it, honestly. Even he Darius should require that. 68. If it, double 18. Game oh, shot on the good shot that. gets Six another one Glenn back. Throw first. And those are the chances that he has to take. He's not out of this. It's only 3-2. Danger maybe of forgetting about the Lithuanian in this one. Such is the form and the, the level of standard that Durant has set. But Labanauskas is going along really nicely. Average of 95. And two legs on the board and that's by far the best that he's shown during the course of this week so he's responding to the challenge he's actually improved on that average 96.6 now and um he's responding to the challenge that he knew he was going to, to going to get always the sign of a player who has that extra gear Yes, he certainly has what it takes. Certainly has what it takes See, with that visit. 180 to Labanaus because his first of the match, only his second of the tournament. Got one against Martin Phillips. Seems a long time ago now. 85. Martin will be well on his way home. Saw him at breakfast this morning and he was on his way back. Dadol Gethlai via train so he won't be back yet 60 but he said he'll be watching tonight the final stages of this world trophy tournament 17 will leave him handy 137 Darius should require 126 on 12 darts this is a leg that Lavanauskas has thrown a 180 and 
It's not over just yet, though. Another one of those. Oh, lucky. Needed the ball. Should have gone for it, and uh, he didn't. Anyway, uh, he did actually. But uh, our spotter was saying he should have gone for it. Actually, as a Scotsman, he said he should have gone for it. And that's double top bound. Four two to Durant, and. Uh, He's off for a break. Labanouskas is having a drink first, and he'll be off for a break. No doubt in a moment or two we will first. So there you are, Glenn Duran, highest finish, 40. That's unusual, although, in fairness, if you've got an average of 108.98, it doesn't really matter. It shows that you've been really scoring well. And Labanouskas, you know, 98.17, that's one of the best of the tournament, isn't it? And he's losing. It's right up there. It is right up there. He has to maintain that. Maybe even go a little better if he's to have any chance. He's fighting. A huge credit must go to Darius for that. Can he pull off one of the shocks of the tournament? We'll find out after the break.
And welcome back at the interval here in this uh, Labanowskis current game, the current game, the last game of the afternoon. It's Glendaren leading by four legs to two and averaging 108.98. Let's call it 109 for the sake of two hundredths of a point. And Labanowskis faring well on 98.17 and uh, still with it all to do though as Durant wants three more legs to make his way into the semi-finals thank you ladies and gentlemen seventh leg it's Darius to throw first earlier. game on against uh, Baker Scott Baker it is perhaps something of a moot point because I'm not sure Labanowskis would have ascended to such heights 95. without his opponent but he is currently slotting in the second best average we've seen in any of the quarterfinals. 99. Yes, he's blowing his uh, fingers as some players I want to and um, Showing us what he's really made of. 100. Getting the ton. He played very, very well a couple of years ago. You said yes. He had his victory, didn't he, over them? And uh, he is showing the same kind of form today that he hasn't shown in the previous two rounds. But he did on that occasion. And uh, I remember saying early doors, good player, this man. Well, now he's giving me. Good reason why I said it. Yeah, he averaged 102, he told me, in that win over Durant. And if he nails this maximum checkout. 58. Darius required 170. 170 um, then. Of course, he'll be in contention at 4 3. We get the other one now. Oh, just underneath, but he's in a very, very good place at the moment. With uh, 65 wanted. And uh, don't say this very often, Durant, way, way back. But we'll want 68 probably when he... 140! No. I was perhaps on that occasion require 65. a little too hasty. But I honestly thought he was going to get the lot. Tops for Labanowskis. Doesn't want to give Durant a chance. Game Doesn't shot on the seventh give leg. Durant a chance. Good dart from Labanowskis. And he's having to play so well just to win legs. But he's still in it. He's not going away. But Durant knows that on his throw, if he puts those in, those kind of darts, then you will see. The Middlesbrough man in the semis. Irrespective of what Labanowskis does. Durant 44. Had five perfect darts in a leg a little while back. Three so far in this one. And as I've said before, 83. I've had the pleasure of standing where the referee is standing on an exhibition night. I'm calling a Glenn Durant nine dart leg. And it's a good feeling. Especially for him. And for everybody watching. Yeah, we've had a couple of close attempts this afternoon. Maybe we're just warming up for a big special in the final session. Ross Montgomery. 45. In our first match, Glenn Durant going with five in this one. Picking off the green bit. 96. And disappointed that he only scored 96 and could have done with another 38 of that. He'd have been 10 ahead. Yeah, once that second one went in, the third one was inevitable. 68 for Durant. Labanowskis can't go out. He can only hit and hope. Ninety-two. 
95. Glenn requires 68. Four. Two data could be done in two. There's the first part. All Game right, then in the three. A 15 Glenn data Lawrence. for Durham. Not one of his better legs, that. Ninth leg, Starris to throw first. Of his Game on. Legs. Great to watch. <laughs> yeah, you're very right. Lavanauskas was back on 2 6, I think. And just shows. 100! And Durant is somewhat human. If he, on his own throw, 15 darts, Lavanauskas is capable. And those are the legs he's really got to try and push Glenn. He's got to hit a 12 darter to win it, though. And that's not easy. 137. One lax visit in that leg. He started with a 44. The rest was totally fine. Yeah, 107.37. If you start, if you if you get a 15 darter and you've got the dart, 85. You'll win a very very high percentage of your matches. Of course, you don't do a 15 darter if you lose because the fella's already gone out in 12. But you know what I mean. All these top pros will say, I'm quite happy if I can go out throw it on my throw in 15 hours. I know I'm throwing down the gauntlet to the other fella. He's got to do a lot better than I have to, 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 to deny me. One hundred and thirty-four. Dirt. He's playing well. Good to see, actually. Easily, easily the best player from Lithuania, and that's evidenced by the number of times he's won the Lithuanian Open. You alluded to it earlier, didn't you, uh, Steve? One, two, three, four, five. Once he caught a fish alive. No, no, no. no. <laughs> well, he has won 17 ranking titles in his career, Darius Lavanauskas. 100! It's not just in his home country either. Ranked 22 in the BDO rankings. Glenn Durant is number two. 174! Darius, you require 82. Yeah, suddenly that leg's not exactly turned around, but it's suddenly taken on a different look. Uh, now then, double 16 for an 82 finish. Ah, oh, what a play. brilliant effort. What a fantastic effort there from Labanowskis. A 14 dart first. leg Game and on. a brilliant 82 using bull double 16. And that was when he was threatened by that 174 from Durant. 140. Well, that was destined for the treble. Just a 140. Oh, that's unfortunate. 95. Only 95. Could have been more. The great second dart deserved more with it. One hundred. It's metronomical in his. Uh, Delivery. Disappointed when he only scores a ton. One hundred. What a good performance this is from his opponent. Five four the score. Yes, still Durant with a huge advantage, throwing first in this and if necessary. Ninety two legs time. But it really says something about this man. And he's only been broken 96. once by a man who's throwing 108 average. Yeah, there's only been one break in the game, the third leg. You're right. 13 data from Durham. All the other legs have gone with throw. Yeah, stay down here. 96. I think Glenn, in his interview, should he go on to win this, will say... That's just what I needed, was pushing a real game before I take on Jim Williams in the semi. And uh, we didn't expect Labanowskis to push him as far as he has here. 20 for double top, for another 15 data, and 6-4. 
There you are. The 6.40 it is. No doubt Lawrence. about it in my mind. Never has been that uh, Durant's going to win this game. But he the will be to have first. been pushed game as on. far as this. Fifty-eight. Now that's a weak start to the leg, and Durant, just like any apex predator, smells blood. One hundred. See there on his face. He knew that a ten forty would have put him right up there. Yes, the T side tungsten tosser knows exactly. Knows exactly. 58. What he has to do. I'd love you to call him that to, <laughs> to his face. A common. That's what we call them. 26. And uh, I'm best keeping my mouth closed after that 26. <laughs> So Labanowskis, can he get a maximum? Because that's got a lovely lie. Surely there's another treble 20 going 100. in. And he'd be disappointed. I'm disappointed that he didn't get another one after that first. Yeah, I, I think this might be the leg where Labanowskis has just lost a little bit of heart. 100. 58, 58 and a ton. He's still in it. I don't think he's face. lost heart. I think he's just lost his aim for a moment or two. Just ain't happening. But he's a very... 58. Laconic sort of guy, isn't he? You know, he's phlegmatic. Quite, just quietly gets on with it. He does not show his emotions, does he? Three scores of 58 in this leg. From Labanowskis. 97. Done. Had one. Aberration of 26, but other than that, it's been there or thereabouts on the tens. I once said of Phil Taylor in the world match play, uh, 30. against Alan Warren in the final, he hit a 26, and it of course hit the world match play in Blackpool. And I said uh, last time Taylor hit 26, Blackpool Rock was a fishing hazard. And he was in, in the paper the next day. <laughs> I think they all attributed it to Sid. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you could almost say the same about Durrance there. We're not exactly a million miles from Blackpool, are we? 121. <laughs> Glenn, you, you go, then. It 84. could be it. Lavanowskis with a good set of darts to leave himself handy. Will he get a shot, though? Glenn Durrance for a place in the semi-final 14 will leave the bullseye 46 not there and Labanowskis then Darius 76 to 76. take him to another one almost all the way yeah you almost want him to because you feel that he deserves it Game and my my play. does he Darius just Labanowskis. what a performance this first. is by the Lithuanian. Yes, Durant had one dart for the match, one dart at bull, but failed to hit it. And uh, Labanowskis took 60. out the 76 beautifully. Only 60 from Durant. Now then, now then, get a ton 40 or a 134, another one of those. And you've got a chance here, Mr. Labanowskis. Oh, already some daylight. 74 between himself and Durant. And this is when Durant really has to turn it on. We could be going the distance, folks, if he doesn't. Massive score from Labanowskis. Has to follow it in. Has to. Now then, now then, 134, 140, a big lead. B R I double L I A N T, Labanowskis, 
brilliant. Notice I spelt brilliant what rather than Labanowskis. <laughs> he is so in the zone that anything can happen here on in. And this is what happens when a dark player, a very good dark player, really knows he has to do it. My, my, my. Durant suddenly finds himself one hundred and forty. Right Darius require eighty-seven. Eighty-seven for an eleven dart finish and six all. Treble twenty. Now bullseye for six apiece. Unlucky twenty-five. One hundred and two for the match. Then for Durant. Is this the end of Labanowski's challenge, or is is he going to come back? 10 leaves double 16 to put an end to it all. Oh, and Labanowskis will come back. So, 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 so. Two darts now for the match. Durant one at bull, one at double 16. 25. Two darts for double eight to take us the distance. A fraction inside. Oh, Nine. two darts to save the match. And I Play have a feeling 60. that that very target that denied Labanowskis is the one that's not going to deny Glenn Durrant at this moment. A fraction in for the match. A double force. Been so good to him in this game. Yeah, it's so shot. good again. And He's never missed a Glenn double Durant. four. And a remarkable darts match with Darius Labanowskis showing his very, very best, sportingly raising the hand of Glenn Durrant. But my, 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 I know Glenn Durrant will speak volumes for the Lithuanian who proved again what a really good player he is. Well, you see the reaction of Glenn Durrant there. Hands together. Just delighted to have scrambled through in the end. And it was a scramble. Huge, huge credit has to go to Darius Labanowskis, who took him near the distance. Perhaps, in the end, if we are hypercritical, should have taken him the distance. Fantastic game fantastic quarterfinal we will hear from our fourth and final semi-finalist Glenn Durrant after the break Ending with our men's final. Thanks each and every one of you for your support.
Well, Darius uh, Labanowskis didn't come to Preston here in Lancashire just for the ride. Uh, he didn't play particularly well in reaching the quarterfinals, but uh, my, my, what a game he gave Glenn Durant. And what a player Glenn Durant showed he is. He withstood that challenge uh, to go through 7-5. He'll be playing Jim Williams later tonight. Maybe we'll find out as he talks to Steve Jameson what he thinks of that and of Labanowskis. Over to you, Steve. Thank you very much, John. Well, what a match. What a match, Glenn. He took you nearly all the way. And is that a match that you felt like you might have needed in this competition? Yeah, that, that's a fabulous question. And we've just talked before there. And uh, I've had some great games with Darius over the years. And I like his pace. You know, I prefer playing slow players in the, than the super quick players. So I, I felt it was going to be a good game. Um, but when, you know, when I came off at 4-2, I remember hitting the tops at, to go 4-2. I thought, you know, I'm going to kick on now. Um, but I tell you what, had I not hit double four there, I think I'd have lost that match. Incredible to say when you've, you've thrown nine on 100 average and really played as well as you have done in the tournament. Did you expect Darius, after the first two rounds that he had, to rise to the level that he did in that match? I know he's beaten you before, yeah. but it seemed unsurprising heading into it. Yeah, I, I knew it would be a good game and I was anticipating a, a good game and it was absolutely silent in there. You know, if there's anybody watching, you know, please come and support finals night tonight because it's, uh, you know, the atmosphere there was, you could have heard a pin drop and that's tough. You know, you'll give me a thousand people shouting behind me over there any day. So, you know, all them circumstances were going through my mind and, you know, when last time that Darius beat me. So, it, you know, sometimes darts can be a bit of a mind game and I certainly went through the ringer there a little bit. Well, you came through the other side of it. You're into the semi-finals against Jim Williams, a player that I know you know well. What are you expecting from that game? Well, I'm playing my best friend. Uh, so, uh, a guy I admire very much. Uh, a guy I'm desperate to beat. Um, but I'm up against probably maybe taking Mark McGinney out the equation, arguably the best player on the BDO circuit at the moment. So, I'm anticipating a, a fantastic game, uh, but I'll be given 110%, that's for sure. Well, I think that's the promotion side of it sorted. <laughs> Glenn, congratulations. We can't wait to watch you later. Thank you very much. Thank you. So there we are. That last game, absolutely breathtaking. And uh, uh, the first one wasn't bad, actually, as Ross Montgomery pulled that one out of the bag and showed true character in coming from 6-4 down to beat Carl McKinstry in 11 data the penultimate leg there which drew him level. Ros Bulmer, she would be the first to admit, completely outclassed by Fallon Sharrock, who averaged for the first time on television over 90, 91.5, and she is deservedly in the final of the women's competition. She'll be playing uh, Lorraine Wynn Stanley, and you can see from that scoreboard that what uh, Lorraine just squeezed through against Anastasia Dobromyslova. You could... Uh, could put a, a cigarette paper between them and hardly notice. Machin, the reigning champion, no longer. Well, he is, of course, until tonight. But uh, an excellent performance by the German, Hunter Buckner. And uh, Williams through to play Glenn Durant in the semi. As you've just heard, best friends, but up there, no such thing. Scott Baker, always a player we enjoy watching. Thanks to him for his contribution. But in the end... Uh, Steve Jameson, who's just come to sit next to me, in the end, we'll be talking about that game between Labanowskis and Glenn Durant for quite a long time to come. Yeah, I think so. And I think Glenn will be remembering that one for quite a long time to come. I don't think he's been in a in a war like that for a little while. And uh, he, well, you say that, he could well be in for one in the semi-final. Jim Williams is playing really, really well. And... You just feel on the upward curve as well. He's grown into this tournament and played better and better against better and better opposition to the other side of the draw. I'm really looking forward to Montgomery versus Hunter Bookney. You cannot put, pick a winner between those two. No clear favourite. Ross is higher ranked and got more experience, but Mikhail looks unstoppable in this competition. It should be an absolutely brilliant night of darts. Yeah, so we're going to have a look at tonight's fair. This is what you've got to look forward to, folks. And believe you me, uh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. We've got 
uh, Ross Montgomery against Michael Unterbuckner. I would not like to say where that one is going to go, although if I was pushed, really pushed, I would have to say that so impressed with the German, I think he could be in the final. I think he could be in the final against Glenn Durant, but I'm not writing Jim Williams off for a moment. He has been very special this week. And as for the ladies' final, I just have the feeling that Fallon Sherrick, having come from 3-0 down to stay in the competition against O'Brien a couple of rounds ago, that it's with her and she has thrown magnificently, as has Lorraine Wynne Stanley. But Fallon Sherrick, I think, will be the winner of that final. It's going to be great, whatever the outcome. I think that's the key point. Three fantastic games pencil in the fourth for a fantastic one as well because either combination of those four players will give us an absolute cracker we can't wait to join you from myself and John and the rest of the team here in Preston we hope you've enjoyed the coverage this afternoon we really look forward to joining you later on this evening don't miss it it'll be live here on free sports the finals of the BDO world trophy and the semis for the men are coming up later on from me and John We'll see you then.